flexible learning plan for the NSTP components, the right shop will be on August 14. I am Cindy Hernandez, the OIC Chief of LSAT OSDS, your MC to the webinar series. Without further ado, may I request everybody to rise for the Philippine National Anthem and remain standing for the prayer. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. you have bestowed upon us. We are truly grateful for them. Thank you for allowing us today to meet and share our knowledge and time with one another virtually. May you send forth your divine wisdom to our speakers as they impart effectively their God-given gift to all of us. May they be blessed as they continue to share their expertise to the people who needs them. Bless the participants as well so that they would be able to obtain vital information from this activity. May you send forth your Holy Spirit so that after this webinar, we may share what we learned in the spirit of your love and generosity, especially during these trying times. May we be able to bring glory to your word in everything that we do. Amen. Thank you and please be seated. Good afternoon once again and thank you for gracing this event via Zoom, OSDS FB Live and YouTube. For this Zoom, in the Zoom room at today, we have the following from Chedro Carr and HEIs. We have four from NCR and HEIs, 37, Region 1 and Chedro, 11, Region 2, 3, Region 3, 6. From 4A, we have 65. Bimaropa, we have 16. Region 5, we have 32. From Region 6, we have 4. Region 7, we have 11. Region 8, we have 4. From Region 9, we have 12. Region 10, we have 42. Region 11, 14. Region 12, 10. From Caraga, we have 6 and BARM, we have four. But based on our registration list today, we have a total of 1,736 participants. All right. At this juncture, we have the following households shared on screen. Number one, participant must be an NSTP director or faculty member teaching NSTP component. Number two, please adhere to the house rules to keep your account on the 
platform. This webinar will be recorded for documentation to ensure the smooth course of the webinar, speakers and moderators and NSTP faculty members will be asked to turn their oh, videos my. on. Participants are requested to keep their microphones on mute for them to be able to focus on the presentation. Number five, if you need to ask questions, use the menu button to, ra to raise your hands so you can be acknowledged or you may type in your questions in the chat box. Please do not spam the chat box. Number six, if you will be unable to enter the Zoom room, the webinar can still be viewed through the OSDS Facebook Live via live streaming. To receive the electronic certificate of completion, make sure that you fill out the online registration form on a daily basis to make sure you have completed the whole duration of the series of webinar. The registration link will, it was also posted in the OSDS Facebook page. Number eight, those watching via FB Live can still receive e-certificate if they are registered. Sana maroon ako mag-unmute sa Zoom ay sa Gmail. And number nine, be courteous to other participants so everyone can from the session. All right. At this moment, let us now hear the welcome message from oh, our dear. OSDS OIC Director for Dr. Mary Silvet T. Ginigundo. and educators. We are launching today a series of webinars designed to train faculty on how to implement the National Service Training Program or NSTP. Ana, tatry ko na ano ah. Tatry ko na, na yung screen ko yung share ko. Okay, can you please mute yourselves? Yung mga uh, nagsasalita. Okay. For NSTP in the new normal educational milieu we're in, we are able to transition from the traditional face-to-face oh, -face learning pa rin to flexible learning with the goal of ensuring there is continuity of learning despite the disruptions, challenges, or even chaos we are currently experiencing associated with COVID-19 pandemic. Next slide. This event is being organized under the umbrella of the CHED Higher Ed or High Ed Bayanihan Program. This program was created to recognize and celebrate the true spirit of volunteerism. A number of higher education institutions and organizations came forward to manifest their willingness to conduct various webinar workshops designed to train faculty members beyond their institutions on flexible learning without asking for financial support from the commission and without charging participants. Our CHED regional offices were also organizing numerous webinars for the past few months to help higher education institutions shift to flexible learning. In re recognition of these altruistic initiatives, the Commission created an identity, thus the CHED Type Ed Bayanihan Program, which was launched with a press conference held on July 8 and 9. Our CHED partners under this program are Philippine Normal University, Central Luzon State University, De La Salle College of St. Benil, Manuel S. Enverga University Foundation, Far Eastern University, 
Carla Agricultural University, the British Council, and of course, the Philippine Society of NSTP Educators and Implementers Incorporated or PISNA. The list of CHED partners is getting longer as we, the Commission, discover other HAIs doing the same selfless efforts. Together, hashtag we learn as one and we learn as we share. Even before the CHED Higher Ed Bayanihan program, the Commission also created the Field CHED Connect to serve as an open educational resources hub containing higher education materials in various formats that are useful for teaching, learning, and research purposes. Let me read what CHED Chairman Jay Postero de Vera said during its launching in June. Field CHED Connect is a landmark initiative made possible with the support of our international and local education and institutional partners who donated or loaned their online resources. We are doing this in line with our commitment to flexible learning for the continuity of higher education in the country and to enhance opportunities for self-learning at home and to support learner-centered peer to peer and social or informal learning approaches. With Field Ched Connect, we educate as one. Unfortunately, next slide. When I check this morning, slide four, there are no resources for NSTP. Hopefully the outputs from the succeeding workshops can be curated and donated to Field Chad Connect so that our faculty and te faculty, teachers, and students will have resources on NSTP. Okay, next. Now let me welcome all the participants to the first of our five webinars. As of last night, I was informed that 1,300 already registered. But this morning, as mentioned by Ms. Cindy, we have uh, 1,736 registered. Unfortunately, we can only accommodate about 300 in the Zoom meeting room today. For those who cannot be accommodated in the meeting room, you can listen to live streaming in the CHED Facebook and CHED OSDS YouTube. For the succeeding webinars, we will determine how to group all the registered participants so that all of you can complete the entire series. So please wait for our email for further instruction. Um, may I request the host to, in, to mute all the participants while I speak? Okay, so let me welcome Dr. Grace Javier Alfonso. She is the epitome of grace, beauty, dedication, and intelligence. In the program, it only states that she is the chairperson of the CHED Technical Panel on Transnational and Distance Education. Oh. She is also one of the most active and tireless member of the CHED Technical Working Group on Flexible Learning. She is a professor emeritus of the University of the Philippines. She was the former chancellor of the UP Open University. She is an academician and an artist. She is well known and well loved in the international community. I was looking for a picture of her on the internet, but what failed to capture her persona. So I just selected four pictures which I think closely represent her. Dr. Alfonso will discuss the CHED guidelines on the implementation of flexible learning. Just a little anecdote, when the Commission and Bank asked who will be our speaker on flexible learning, when I told them Dr. Alfonso, they approved the program immediately. That is how much respected and loved Dr. Alfonso is by the Commission on Higher Education. Next slide. Of course, hindi po magpapahuli ang second speaker natin for today, the very articulate, debonair, charming, handsome, passionate, and 
always respectful, Dr. Carmelo Jan C.J. Vidal. When I was looking for his pictures in his Facebook, I could not determine what are the old and the new ones because it seems he didn't age at all through the years. So I'm showing these pictures without his permission, but now he knows. So sorry, Sir CJ. So he is the board secretary of PISNE and also the dean of graduate school of the University of Luzon. I've known him for a short time because I only joined the Office of Student Development and Services only this February. But through our virtual meetings, I got a glimpse of his brilliance and dedication on enhancing NSTP implementation. So Dr. CJ will give an introduction on the flexible learning training for NSTP faculty. Next slide. I have to admit, I am no expert on NSTP, but I believe in its mission to enhance the civic consciousness and defense preparedness of the Filipino youth by developing their ethics of service and patriotism. So it is imperative that the NSTP educators and implementers will be able to competently shift to flexible learning so that the gains made in its implementation before will continue and the gaps observed will be addressed even during the pandemic. Next slide. I am happy to share with you that the Commission and Bank has approved the revised NSTP-1 modules. These approved modules shall be the basis for our flexible learning training, and I hope Dr. CJ will discuss this further in his presentation. Just to give you an overview, um, in terms of number of training hours, the, the number of training hours remain to be from 54 to 90 wow. hours. Um, we also have common modules. Dito po sa app na disrupt deeds. The common modules in the old um, uh, framework is composed of seven modules, but for the revised modules, we only now have five. So natanggal po yung first two, yung physical organization and course orientation and NSTP program RA9160. In the, all, in the old framework, we have specific modules for 83 training hours. But for the revised, uh, we have specific modules for 29 hours and then optional modules for 36 hours. Okay, so next slide. Let me end my welcome remarks by saying thank you to PISNE, headed by its president, Major Hermi Pava, for supporting the initiatives of the commission. Thank you also to the members of the technical working group on NSTP, and a loud thank you shout out to the staff of the OSDS Local Student Affairs Division, headed by the OIC Chief, Ms. Cynthia Hernandez, for working behind the scenes and being excellent team members. Next slide. To survive the pandemic, to ensure continuity of learning, to deliver quality teaching, let our collective battle cry be, together we educate as one, we learn as one, and we learn as we share. Thank you and good afternoon. Cindy. Thank you, Ma'am Silvet. At this point, to proceed to the heart of this activity, it is my pleasure to call now our first speaker, friends, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Grace Gigi Javier. Alfonso. Maraming maraming salamat, Ma'am Cindy. And uh, good afternoon, Director Silvet. And it's really good to see you all, uh, my dear colleagues and friends. So let me uh, start with 
giving you the uh, salient points of our guidelines in flexible learning. So uh, may I share my slides? Uh, thank you. Uh, okay ba yung sound ko? Ay, tsaka nakikita nyo na slide ko? Yes po, ma'am. We can see. Okay, thank you. We can hear you and we can see the slides. Wonderful. Thank you. Now, uh, I think, merong ano ha, merong outside. Okay. So let me do my reading of this. We know the rationale for flexible learning. And in fact, a lot of us, we have been moving towards this and uh, ang yung uh, pagpunta uh, dito sa flexible learning, yung iba nauuna na, yung iba mag-uubisa pa lang. So the emergence of COVID-19 pandemic brought unprecedented disruptions. And uh, napaka, ano rin yan, uh, because people all over the world, uh, it came so unexpectedly where no one was ready actually and now we have this impact to society and we're all feeling it. Thus, it has become an urgent need to explore uh, other innovative learning modalities. So, napaka-importante po ngayon uh, na we go into flexible learning. Uh, migration from traditional to flexible learning, teaching and learning options. And uh, ang, ang meet po nito is uh, we will be dif uh, differently situated in terms of time, pace, and place. Pero what is definite is that we have a separation between students and teachers. So uh, for, we still don't know for quite some time, but kasi ang face-to-face -face neon. So uh, the implementation of flexible learning as a delivery mode shall be adopted for the academic year 2020-2021 and shall be reviewed by the commission in consultation with stakeholders uh, whenever deemed necessary. And HEI shall likewise be subjected to every year or annual assessment by CHEDOS. These guidelines on uh, flexible learning should not be construed as an authority to operate transnational education as provided in RA 11448, which is the Transnational Higher Education Act uh, of 2016. So these are the policy standards and guidelines of transnational education or what we call as TNE programs. Let's go to the definition of terms and uh, May I, uh, all right, let me, okay. So uh, flexible learning is a pedagogical approach, allowing flexibility of time, place, space, including, including but not solely focused on the use of technology. So there is this uh, change in delivery modes of distance and it borrows actually from the de delivery methods of distance education and facilities of education technology and also uh, depending on the levels of technology, availability of devices, internet connection, digital liter literacy and approaches. The design and delivery of programs, courses and learning interventions are unique in uh, needs in terms of place, space, process, and products of learning. It involves the digital and non-digital, the use of digital and non-digital technology and covers both face-to-face -face, uh, if available, but now it's not. So it's really, we talk about out of school learning modes of delivery or a combination of these modes which ensures the continuity of inclusive and accessible education. And uh, we talk of uh, also here learners and teachers are co-creators of knowledge and have 
the control of the customization of the learning experiences for enhancement of learning uh, grounded on uh, the realities of a learning and teaching environment. Hence, flexible learning is actually, in a way, uh, convertible in its uh, learning design that considers the students, number one for you know, students, student needs for various access to our courses. <clears throat> and it also recognizes the di diverse learning styles. So the general guidelines, uh, ito po yung meet ng ating uh, guidelines. Flexible learning is a learner-centered approach that is deeply rooted. And uh, actually the needs of the students, the main objective should be to provide learners the most flexibility on the learning content, schedules, access, and innovative assessment, making use of digital and non-digital tools. And HEIs shall continue to exercise their judgment in the deployment and availability and the flexible learning and other alternative modes of delivery. In uh, we're talking about not being able to have the face-to-face -face modality. So there is that exercise of discretion by HEIs. And of course, in terms of faculty, it must uh, be reasonable, transparent, and this is, I cannot overemphasize the need that it has to be consistently outcomes-based. And uh, w this is with reference to CHED COVID advisory number six. So uh, number three, HEIs shall formulate decisions use data driven and participatory approaches of determining and implementing the most viable form of flexible learning and teaching that they will utilize based on their capability, their condition, and then uh, not, and also the national government agency guidelines and local government advisories. And number four, as a sustainability and monitoring mechanism, HEIs, at the point important, should submit uh, the uh, what we call as the learning continuity plan, so LCP. So kailangan po isabin natin to sa CHED regional office. At, uh, at the beginning of the academic year 2020-2021. So, uh, ito sana ay gawin nyo na para maisabit nyo na. Uh, it shall reflect the framework and the system of transition and integration of flexible learning approaches and overall absorptive capacity of the HEI to articulate its preparedness and response interventions that reduces disruption of classes and impact of natural calamities, making continuity of learning more resilient. So as far as the implementation of flexible learning component is concerned, uh, ito po yung kasama ng what we call as a, uh, uh, Executive summary should be part of it. Systems and procedures adopted for the transition to flexible learning. So, and the key people, modalities, resources, and support services for students, and also the ways of assessment of effectiveness, teaching and learning activities and requirements, and also the expected outcomes, including that of the OJT and home. Uh, among others, and uh, C, you have policies on enrollment, kasamari buyan, attendance, reporting, and updating uh, uh, of student performance and engagement, uh, grading system, teaching complement, intellectual property rights, importante rin buyan, at yung OER. Yung OER ho ay open educational resources. And also, we talk about uh, kailangan ipaintindi natin sa mga estudyante natin plagiarism. 
among others. And uh, D, we have to have this constant dialogue with the LGU. Uh, and also be always aware of the, uh, the many things that we're coming up with, coming from the IATF and the other relevant stakeholders. So, kailangan be updated and a possible partner in the preparation during the COVID-19 uh, situation, considering different situation of regions in the Philippines. So, we just have to be updated all the time. And lahat po yan, ilalagay natin dito sa ating LCP. And uh, E, health and safety protocols in uh, accordance with the uh, task force, the interagency task force, uh, and uh, the local government unit advisories as well. F, overview and orientation guide for students, teachers, and uh, school administrators and uh, our support services staff. And the G, mechanisms for continuous quality improvement. So number five, flexible learning should complement outcomes-based, to put in again, outcomes-based education approach, which allows flexibility for the HEIs to employ various means of delivery and assessment as long as they can show the achievement of the set learning outcomes for each course or for each subject of the program. In terms of learning content, HEIs shall view, let me try to, uh, shall review all the curricular offerings and make the necessary adjustments of the modifications of the curricular structures and program of study. Considering the prerequisites, the requisites, determine alternative options and also the course design, delivery, pedagogy, and assessment mechanisms and the delivery modes. The students, uh, you know, uh, they will have to be receiving their course contents and uh, their course guides through various modalities. HEI's implementation of its flexible learning strategy must be anchored towards also the higher education institutional objectives, which is to produce graduates who are globally uh, competitive, responsive, uh, nationally responsive, innovative, and technologically driven. So seven, on the management of learners, HEI shall provide mechanisms to inform our learners on the learning system to be implemented, so important orientation, which may be in a form of uh, even a student uh, handbooks uh, and important po yon the mabibigyan sila ng, ng connectivity and also uh, yung maipabahagi natin yung ating malasakit sa ating mga estudyante. And then they should be uh, accessible through offline and offline modalities. Uh, we need to put together our course packages. This may include course syllabi, study guides, learning activities, and the resources, and also uh, repositories of learning resources, schedule of lessons, consultations, assessment, monitoring of students, engagement, schedule, and mechanisms for submissions of their requir requirements, grading system, feedback portals, uh, student support systems. Not po ito, uh, these are all needed to manage their study time and maximize their learning. So the systems and procedures for the transition to flexible learning should be really very uh, accessible to all students, officials, teaching and non-teaching staff, and uh, 
lahat po ito uh, should uh, be coming out in policy documents such as the guidebook, manual, briefer, and it may be incorporated in, as I was talking about the institution student handbook. So HEI should really implement mechanisms so that our students can receive and access printed or digital course packages, instructional materials through uh, designated pickup points or through digital platforms. Number eight. So uh, HEIs shall establish means for student and teacher engagement communication, which may include short message services, a uh, service, meaning texting, SMS, electronic mail, this is how we can engage our students, and uh, chat, maybe either uh, Viber or uh, Messenger, instant messaging, and other means, whichever is convenient, appropriate, and available in order to ensure personalized, effective, efficient and timely mentoring and feedback mechanisms. So ito po, we're num in number nine, HEI should explore establishing linkages with relevant national and local agencies. So you can also be talking to telecommunication companies, civil societies, uh, organizations, professional organizations, international organizations and other institutions to strengthen and or complement existing resources, infrastructure or connectivity to ensure undisrupted learning of the students. So 10, HEIs are encouraged to maximize the use of technology to support learning and teaching, which may include the following. So uh, ito talaga binibigyan ng emphasis yung situation ng ating estudyante. Kasi iba-iba ho eh. So meron po itong categories natin, meron high-level technology, o meron medium-level technology, and low-level technology. So pag sinabi natin high-level technology, oh, they probably have their laptops, mobile phones, tablets, desktops, at saka very fast ang connectivity nila. And proficient ang digital literacy nila. Online learning or blended learning would be the approach to, uh, for the learning and teaching. Now, yung sa medium level technology, mostly phones. Medyo can be slow ang connectivity. And in terms of digital literacy, may, pwede na, advanced in a way, medium maybe, pero macro and micro learning approach and a mix of online and offline activities. So, for the low-level technology, ito po yung pag sinabi low-level, pwedeng wala talagang access. Uh, may konting access, pero pwedeng walang access. So, some mobile phones or technology may be available, pero poor or no internet connection. At uh, siguro ang digital interest si baka beginner and uh, eto ngayon uh, then we have to have these courses put into self instructional modules mostly offline activities so uh, also uh, that's the uh, determining the level of technology now b establishment of a multimedia or learning resource center to provide support to faculty members in the development of IT-enabled and IT-mediated instructional materials. C, access, utilization of electronic library and or available open educational resources, what calls OER, as reference in various flexible learning pedagogies and in uh, its disciplinal content. D, utilization of a learning management system, LMS. So, meron po tayo dyan, uh, yung iba merong LMS, 
pero karamihan po walang elements. But uh, there are many ways of uh, coming up with online support. Uh, later on, maybe I can talk about that. I'll give you some tips on this. And uh, so you can go LMS, either proprietary or non-proprietary. Uh, 11, HEIs shall implement or explore grants and or support capacity building programs for administrators, faculty, and staff who are transitioning to flexible learning. And 12, HEI shall ensure that health and safety protocols are maintained. HEI shall also establish means to remind students, teachers, and other uh, uh, personnel of the health and safety protocols through display of reminders in conspicuous areas within the school premises. You can come up with some viral announcements. 14. The implementation of flexible learning by HEIs for both undergraduate and graduate programs should still be guided by the principles, again, of outcomes-based education and by applicable PSGs to ensure quality of teaching and learning. So ito po yung pinaka uh, mga Gs natin, pero uh, sa guidelines. Now we also are encouraging the consortium, the coming up of consortia among, uh, among universities. Uh, the establishment of consortium is bounded by a common vision and mission to ensure quality and excellence of the delivery of the various academic programs. This engagement of HEIs is anchored in the spirit of the Bayanian and the culture of cooperation as a way of achieving goals. It entails strengthening partnerships, co-production, and sharing of resources, building capacities and facilitating mobility while maintaining a sense of ownership to outcomes and account, accountability to the process and impact to stakeholders. So, napaka importante po nito. So, we're encouraging consortium uh, development. And let me, ano ba ibig sabihin ng consortium? It is a reciprocal and mutually beneficial arrangement among universities that seeks that seek to build on the culture of shared responsibility. So expand this linkage, uh, it, it will push expanding inclusivity, promoting quality, and empowering capacities in Philippine higher education system. Further, a consortium refers to a collaboration of agreement. Kasi pwede ho't kayo mag-consortium not necessarily in terms of degrees or coming up with, but you can have uh, development, <clears throat> of course, materials, development of OERs, etc. So marami pong pwedeng uh, mga, mga gagawin natin for, for flexible learning that can be considered as mutually beneficial to the HEIs who will bond together. So it can also be coming out with massive open online courses and open educational resources and so on. So, meron din pong guidelines yan. Ang maganda dito, uh, HEIs may form a consortia and how do we do it? Uh, this is the way to do it, but not limited to the following. The development and production of open educational resources, massive open online courses, etc. Development of websites and LMS for delivery of flexible learning through sharing of curricula, syllabus, study guides, and learning resources. So sharing of flexible learning strategies, learning resources, and modes of delivery for all types of learners, including the most disadvantaged ones. 
So to effect, uh, nandyan din po to uh, develop ICT-based assessment tools, research on best practices for flexible learning and development of learning hubs, innovative ways to maximize the promotion of library resources. Ito po yung mga areas na pwede tayo mag-collaborate, mag-partner, at mag-form ng, ng uh, mutually benefit uh, mutually benefit our institutions as we do it. So, meron po yung MOA and, uh, and this will be checked by our CEDROS, CEDROS and shall be be furnished with a MOA for the information of the stakeholders as well. So, ito po yung last part, yung CHED shall implement developmental projects to assist institutions and members and students transition to flexible learning. So, it wants to uh, closely collaborate with its stakeholders and partners to ensure teaching and learning outcomes, such as uh, provision and support services, capacity building trainings, uh, just like what we're doing now. Ito po ay kasama po ng ating bayanihan at, uh, and contiguous enrichment of the field chat connect with the diverse open educational resources at meron pong uh, financial grants, uh, but it has to go through process Ito po ay napaka-importante that you be involved and come out with your proposals and submit it to CHED. So, yan po ang, ano, uh, uh, ang hinaharap po natin ngayon ay para doon sa mga, ito po ako na ito nagsasalita as a, a person who has been teaching for quite some time in, um, in higher education and face-to-face uh, -face mode. Uh, traditional mode and online mode. So I'd like to uh, or share my thoughts on this. So yung mga higher education institutions, yung ba August opening, yung ba September. So let me tell you that uh, even prior to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, ito po yung nangyayari na. Yung uh, exponential growth ng web from one point, uh, web 1.0 to web 5.0. Ang tawag na nga ngayon yan eh, ano eh, Symbionet Web. Connected 24-7. And so a lot of uh, universities, schools, and colleges all over the world have been trying to maximize this uh, uh, tool. Uh, but at the same time, it was pushed also by the Industrial Revolution 5.0, where so many things are happening. Artif artificial intelligence, robotics, nanotechnology, quantum computing. Lahat po yan ang nangyayari, as you can see it on the screen. So, ang education naman, nagre-respond din. Yung EDUC 5.0. So, technology-mediated, technology-enhanced, lifelong learning. So, meron na uh, talagang trend towards diverse place and time, project-based, field-based, uh, dado din po yung uh, what we call as, uh, you know, uh, uh, coming up with digital repositories, MOOCs, OERs. Ito po actually itong ano, flexible, flipped, blended. Actually, a flexible, flipped, blended pang uh, at tawag doon ay residential mode po yun. Pero technology enhanced. Opo. So, ang trend din po, student ownership, lifelong learning. And it has been happening. So, uh, prior to COVID-19, it was called a disruption. Kasi uh, some universities, colleges, and schools na in the traditional form, <clears throat> we're thinking that these are disruptions. Kasi hindi siya face-to-face. -face. Pero ngayon po na COVID-19 is here, the pandemic is here. So this same concept is now being looked at 
for continuity and enhancement of education. So, nandito po tayo sa ganitong lugar na ngayon. So, academics are engaged in reflexive mode and intently reviewing how we will develop uh, course design, course uh, curriculum design, use and production of content and resources, delivery modes, uh, assessment, student and faculty support, uh, technical, actually, and administrative services. So, because if you will touch delivery modes, then you will have to eventually look at the other elements because kailangan galawin din po yun. So, appreciation of the paradigm shift resources would de depend on the resources of the institution, the administra administrator's mindset, and also our teachers, students, parents, and our other stakeholders on how they will receive this migration to a new paradigm. So ngayon, lahat po, we're all going through reimagining, reimagining the management of all these elements to ensure, to assure and ensure continuity and enhancement of education. Kaya ho, ang mangyayari nito, tayo po ay maglalabas ng various models of flexible learning and teaching. So, hindi po magiging pare-pareho lahat. You know? Pero meron po akong mga suggestions that you might want to uh, take uh, some ideas from. So, let me... So, uh, actually, meron po akong uh, itong model na ito, itong what we call flexible convertible. Kasi makikita nyo dyan, pag tinignan nyo yung curriculum nyo, outcomes-based, kailangan lagi nandun doon, outcomes-based and competency-based. Uh, yung course design, napaka-importante, tsaka development of uh, our materials, yung course content, and course requirements, nandyan po, tsaka yung schedule, dapat nandyan. Uh, at nandun din po yung student and faculty support uh, at yung at yung okay so, kita nyo details I'm not uh, uh, hindi ko na yung basahin nakikita nyo naman po so pero yung red na yon makikita nyo may red dito eh yung like face to face kapag meron face to face di ba so kaya you can convert it to your regular traditional uh, mode of face to face pero ito learner centered po siya this we have discussed there are students with access to internet uh, good connectivity meron silang gadget at saka they will be comfortable in making use of up to making use of the LMS. Pero napakadami ho nang hindi na walang connectivity. Mahina ang connectivity. So hindi siya cure yung pag but will satisfy most comfortable. So kaya nga, meron pa po kayong ways of the thing to do Online, offline, online, asynchronous, synchronous, and so doon sa minimal access, ang dami kailangan gawin. Doon sa slide before, nakita nyo meron pick-up points, meron delivery na physically yung core ay and therefore knowing that we have learners with bad levels of technology um, access and we I think Dr. 
Mr. Alfonso was cut off. Let's just wait for her. Ma'am, mahina po. Pakilakasan. Let's wait for Dr. Alfonso. Na, naputol po yung connection niya. I'm sorry, I got naputol ako. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, ma'am. Sorry. Apa? Uh, um, may na lang ito. So, I just like to continue this. Mag-slide share ako uli, ano? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, I think, yeah. So, we also need to support our faculty. Kasi sila talaga yung mag curate and produce the materials and the, you know, and uh, the course materials and resources. Identify experts. Yung po mga magsusulat ng, uh, or uh, kung kinurate niya yung mga written chapters of books or journal articles and so on to be put together. And uh, lahat po ito or our experts tur uh, turning to podcasts. No? Yung mga lectures nila i-podcast natin para maging accessible sa mga estudyante. So, siya rin po gagawa ng learner-centered writing. No? Ito ang course guide natin. So, and to come up with self-assessment questions that goes with it and the requirements of uh, uh, the course and also napaka-importante napaka na bigyan ng suporta ang faculty kasi siya rin po yung facilitator of learning at uh, kailangan po ng suporta ng administration sa faculty. So, what is most important, there has to be quality assurance in all levels. Outcomes-based learning, so learner-centered siya. And, and these are the things that should come out. Requirements must encourage transpar transparency, accountability, fairness, as learners and faculty are co-creators of academic texts. And uh, actually, not only academic texts, but actually knowledge. And... Uh, so, uh, what is important is that siguro uh, for our, ito mga suggestions ko lang po, no? don't think that this is a requirement or I, I'm just saying that these are some pointers that you might want to take home. And so, research-based assignments. So, ako po madala sa aking mga kurso, research papers, synthesis papers, reflection papers, project-based po ang mga assignments ko. And, uh, reporting, pagka ang ginagawa ko, pinapasubmit ko yung video nila para proof na silang gumawa. Tapos, uh, and then binibigay lang sa akin yung link. And then I look at it. So, uh, it can be coming out with documentaries and video or portfolio. And so, asynchronous learning is, uh, should be more pre preferred because Ah, uh, yung synchronous uh, learning po, sana optional yon. Kasi, ito po yung synchronous learning na magpapakamatay ang sudyante para makakuha ng signal at that particular time. So, uh, so sobrang stressful po yon. So, as much as possible, yung synchronous uh, platform ninyo, gamitin nyo for orientation, or facilitate learning, ask them what they do not understand sa course materials nila. Kasi nakasulat na yun eh. Buo na yun bago nyo i-offer eh. So, for them to really learn. And it's really designed for self-learning. So, napaka-importante na magkaroon din ng clear guidelines, 
yung punto ko sa OER, IPR, plagiarism, and it's important to have feedback. Kasi pwede naman kayo mag-feedback sa Viber, in, uh, lahat yun, pwede yung gamitin, or Messenger, or email, just plain email. And uh, so ako, suggestion po, eto naman, ginagawa na ni Ma'am Silvete. Eh. Meron na kayo nito, sunod-sunod na, na webinar, di ba? So that's good. Ba, ba, uh, also, workshop. Sana uh, magkaroon ng pagkakataon na gumawa sila to do it already and to write it. So my suggestion really is to come up with a three-day, if you can do this uh, per university, this would be wonderful. So, ako, I've always uh, suggested this and I've done this uh, because it works. Eh. Yung uh, three days, magre-write shop kayo. You can organize the groups by, uh, uh, by discipline, okay? And then you have to get them all and say, you know, uh, the atmosphere. There has to be that spirit of determination, of enhancing, and transforming their learning and teaching. So, yung flexible learning na yan, by August 24, probably, yung iba, yung iba, September. So, you can use the Zoom meeting, itong ginagawa natin, and may breakout meetings ito. Pwedeng uh, mag-break break out. And pwedeng going workshops. So, uh, you, kung kulang yan sa inyong faculty, you can have a mirror group, mirror setup in your Google Meet, tapos pwede rin po manood sila sa Facebook Live. So, you can organize your team. Your facilitators would be IT people and video production experts. Then, team, the team of faculty facilitators would be important. And sana the university president would be there also. So, anong output dyan? Yung course design. At saka yung course guide. At saka determining or curating already the course content. Uh, by three days, you'll be able to do that. You start up with coming up with uh, your syllabus. Daladala na dapat ang syllabus. And then, those are syllabus, you will see this. Diba? The general objective, which is sana obidized now. We call it obidized. But kung hindi naman, then you have to turn them to uh, yan pong pisa, understand, that is promote, prepare, participate, volunteer. Ang kita nyo, these are all active verbs. So, eto, student, uh, we call that learner-centered. Kasi malalaman nila kung ano dapat ang gagawin nila. Hindi siya teacher-centered na it's about the teacher, what they will do. Ito, what the student will do. And what are the learning objectives, outcomes based po. So, ito yung course structure. Kung modular ang gagawin nyo, na nakita ko kanina, meron na kayong modules, which is the good thing. Alright? So, structure muna, unit 1, unit 2. Tapos yung mga topics kanina, yung mga objectives, are the modules, actually. Oo. Then, then you bring up, you have your, of course, you have your title, your course description, and course resources per module. At nakikita nyo dito, with SAQs, meaning self-assessment questions, and the answers to self-assessment questions, para they can, can drill themselves. No? And then yung uh, activities per module. Nandiyan din po activity 1, activity 2, etc. So, but always bear in mind the paradigms of learning. Uh, tayo, nakapeg tayo in certain, it's a worldview really. Pero medyo may mga changes na nangyayari. Maybe you can look into it. So yung behaviorism, was a really is a, a view in which behavior can be explained and according to this perspective only observable behavior should be considered 
Yung cognition, emotions, moods are far too subjective. And then number two, cognitivism is a learning theory developed by Jean Piaget. In this theory, students learn most effectively through text and lecture instruction. Yung isa, constructivism, uh, linking. Ito naman, eh, linking new information to these experiences. People use these experiences and new information to construct their own meaning. Nado din po yung humanism, which emphasizes the value and agency of human beings, individually and collectively. Then, connectivism. Ito yung medyo bago-bago po. Uh, <clears throat> and it talks about the uh, people. It's a process of information by forming connections. Uh, and uh, this is uh, in the develop, developed in the digital and technology age. Ito po yung mga connectivism. Kinoconnect mo do sa expert. Kinoconnect mo doon sa, sa event na ito and so on. So the learning experience is authentic. So ito naman, uh, so when you, you have to look at all these elements, this is really the constructing course design and development. So nandun yung intended learning outcomes. Outcomes based po tayo. Nandyan po yung learning activities at nandyan po yung course requirements and assessment. So pag tinignan natin yung ito po, outcomes based, remember, intended learning outcomes. Uh, ito yung mga selection of, if you, if you want to go through the selection of all the verbs, active verbs, uh, si Bloom's taxonomy, laging si Bloom's, would have this. May mga revisions na yung dati niya, they were nouns, now it has become verbs. At uh, in the higher, itong uh, pyramidal na, na, na drawing na ito, yung create is the highest, higher order thinking, yung evaluate, analyze yung nasa mataas yun. Pero, uh, meron namang version na, hindi, you know, in learning, kailangan ito lahat. Alright? But look at this, no? Maganda ito. Tignan nyo ito. Ito, digital. Digital ang verbs nito. Baka you might like to look into this when you're you're trying to develop uh, your course already. And, uh, diba? I iba, eh. Iba. Because of, of uh, the technology. No? So, now, yan ang intended outcomes. Ano ba? Actually, it should be specific, measurable, realistic, learner-centered. Are the, sabi mo, are the course objectives the same as learning outcomes? Yes. As long as they're written as learner-centered. Yung active verb na ang estudyante ang nasa sentro. So, Ang talagang yun answer ng outcomes na yan, learning outcomes, you intended learning outcomes, what should learners know and be able to do? So, outcomes based at competency also. All right. So, let's go back to that. Binabalikan ko lang yan para makita natin yung, yung learning activities. What does that mean? Diba? How will learners learn? So, Importante yung planning the learning experience. Identify the experts, ibig sabihin yung writers o yung mga, yung can you rate na mga texto, yung video, podcast. Tapos yung experts na yan, hindi ma-match nyo ngayon. Ano ngayon ang mga output? As that will be now the course resources. Yun na yung content. All right. So, balik tayo li dyan. So, to complete it, you have the assessment and the requirements. Yan po. Uh, in the back of our minds, we have this. And then come up with the rubric. How will learning be measured? Yan po ang ina-answer no? So, by the time you have the three days, matatapos yun na ho yung writing ng course guide nyo. Okay? So, ma-identify nyo modules nyo. Ma pwede na kayong gumawa ng mga intro nyo, mga podcast nyo. 
So, yung activities na lang, kasi nandun na yung requirements, nandun na yung schedule, yung activities, how do you now engage your learners? Yun yung, so, you have to be imaginative in your, uh, you know, uh, in your online and offline activities. So, yung next three days, ito na ho yung huli, yung shared experience po, sana you put together all your faculty who have had experience in online teaching and then uh, uh, I'm sure they, they can talk about OERs, enhance their existing PowerPoint presentations and, uh, and really look at the existing resources around and uh, you can set up your own channel in your Gmail. Sana maturuan natin sila. Mabilis lang ho yun. Tapos, production of course materials. Napaka-importante yun. And uh, yung mismong faculty, kasi expert siya eh. So, ipopodcast niya yung gusto niya lecture. Tapos, sila lagay niya lang sa kanyang channel or uh, ilagay niya yung link ng kanyang podcast. So, after three days, di ba, magandang gawin niya ng Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Tapos, the next, uh, the next, ano naman, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday uli, yung in-between, mga homework nila. So that, in 10 days, ito pala, yeah, this is the way I teach yung online course ko. Alright, I've developed about 10 courses. And I really use the, uh, uh, social media, lahat po yan. So I have my courses up there. I have uh, my students, they develop their courses. I, uh, uh, I make them make videos, etc. of the subject matter. So they now interview the experts. Sila mismo ay nakaka-develop din ng resource. So I also uh, have uh, done MOOCs. No? So, ito po yung mga MOOCs natin, yung mga nakalagay po yan doon sa Phil uh, Ched Connect. So, it is given free. It's accessible. We're sharing this for free. At uh, ganun din po, like dito sa ating uh, TV app. Ito po, kasi uh, gumagawa kami ng mga productions, uh, by national scientists, national artists, scholars, researchers, mga documentaries, award-winning short films, etc. Nando po lahat yan. Baka sakaling kailangan yung, uh, pwede nyo gamitin sa inyong mga kurso, libre po lahat because it's a digital OER repository and uh, it is also a publication system. Pero lahat po libre to. Alright? So, uh, it has a search button so you can put in your your topic and then or resource or the name of the person you're looking for and everything will come out and you can select so sa 10 days matatapos ko at ready na kayo ready na kayo to have your opening day so Maraming pong salamat. So, sana pag natapos natin course package natin, uh, what I call as, uh, ano po, less headache, less stress for students, for faculty, and for HEI administration. Stay well and thank you po. Maraming pong salamat sa inyo. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so salamat much. Po. Dr. Gigi Alfonso for the comprehensive presentation. At this point, yun po ang mga messages brought po sa chat box at saka po dun sa ating FB comment. They are requesting po ng copies, e-copies of the sure. our presentation. Yes, yes. Padadala ko po sa inyo. Thank you po. Again, thank you very much. Pwede ba kayo mag-entertain ng few questions na uh, one or two? Of course. Okay. okay. Ma, 
Mm-hmm. Maya-maya pa naman ako. I can I can stay for a while. Ah, sige po, ma'am. Okay. You want the questions now or after? Ah, uh, si uh, Pang Carlos Hilado, he's raising his hand. Sir, yes, go ma- ahead. Yes, good afternoon. Yes, this Hello. thank you so much, ma'am Gray, uh, Dr. Grace for that comprehensive uh, um okay. webinar. And I'd like also to ask the raise this to our chat. Uh, ma'am, we have this what we call as minimum uh, requirements for our um shall we say during the normal the normal uh, still moment of of our mm. history but we are we are now in the new normal now we have these minimum requirements for our nstp ma'am shall we go are, are we still going to abide for those topics that was uh, uh that was covered or that were covered by our nstp po another one we have this uh, prior to the selection of uh, the components, as it, it is stipulated in the IRR 9163, the ROTC, the CWTS, and the LTS, we have this, the 25 hours common module. Uh, uh, this is outside of uh, uh, prior to the, choose, uh, to the component, the chosen field or component of an STP. What can we do with this, ma'am? Uh uh, ang alam ko dito, di ba? NSTP1, NSTP2 kayo, di ba? Yes, po. Oo. Tapos, uh, meron kayong course objectives. Eh. Yes. Pareho pa rin ang course objectives. Yes. Ang mangyayari lang is is the uh, learning and teaching, the pedagogy of it. Di ba? Mm-hmm. How are you now? Yun yung imagining na kailangan talaga eh. Re-imagining. Na... Paano mo ngayon mahihit din the same, the same outcomes-based, ano? ba Yun yung outcomes, eh. Kailangan, it should not be uh, diluted. Pero meron many ways of uh, attacking it. So, pero yun din, yun pa rin. Hindi tayo nagdadayut ng quality. Ah, well, sa akin yun. Ewan ko si Ma'am Silvet. Siguro Ma'am Silvet should say should be the one to answer this. Really. Um, Ma'am, okay. later kasi si Dr. C.J. Vidal will talk about more on the mm-hmm. at the mm-hmm. revised common modules uh, uh, for NSTP1. Kasi at the moment, ang approved lang po ng Commission and Bank ay magkaroon na ay, ay yung revised NSTP1 module. Wow, that's great to hear, Ma'am. Um, no, NSTP2 po ay um, magkakon pa tayo ng panibagong um, workshop for NSTP2 but right now we are just concentrating on NSTP1 mm-hmm. yung mga theoretical po. One Ako ma'am, may tanong sa inyo, Dr. Alphonse. Oh, oh, oh. Sige po. <laughs> Sige po, yes. patagin na na sa isip ko eh. Kasi, di oh, nawala. Hindi, <laughs> alam ko yun. Uh, na, na, nagsa-search kasi ako sa internet ng mga alternative learning tools kapag yeah. dun sa mga probinsya na walang internet. At ang Kore. nakita ko po ay kaka-okay learning. Um, okay. Ang ano po ma'am, um, kasi karamihan po ng bahay ng mga Pilipino may kaka-okay. Lahat ng LGUs. Memang kaka-okay. Tama. Pwede kaya oh. pa itong magamit sa uh, flexible learning, ma'am? Alam mo, lahat po pwede magamit eh. Radyo, television, karaoke. I don't know how, ano. Pero kasi di ba, if you feed mo yung material, audio base, pwede, di ba? Kasi mas mahal mag-print. Kasi ang uh, mga hindi mapupunta, yung mga kailangan mapuntahan na walang connectivity, talagang isusulat mo eh, diba? Pero matagal talaga gawin yun, sulatin mo lahat, diba? Pero, kung magle-lecture, audio-based, baka pwede talaga yung karaoke na rin yan. Ewan ko kung, kung parang cassette-based pa rin ba yan, o ano. Siguro we can find out. So maybe you can use that. Oo. Sige ma'am. Maganda yun, ha? That's, that's a good uh, no, idea. Sige, ma'am. Makipag, makikipag-usap pa ako sa inyo. Oh, yes. Please. please okay. Alright. So, Thank maybe you. Miss Cindy, um, 
to tell si ma'am ay namamaya nandito pa. Maybe we can proceed with the presentation of Dr. CJ. If he's ready. Yes, Ang may nagsasalita ba? Meron yata. Ay. Tanong ba yun? Tanong? Wala, ma'am. Ma'am, later na lang yung ibang tanong. Oo, sige. Okay. okay, sige po. Thank you po, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you once again, ma'am Gigi. Wala, ma'am. At this point, let us now proceed for the next topic. Our next speaker, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next speaker, Dr. Carmelo Jan Espino Vidal. Hello, sir. <laughs> Sorry, all the while I thought I, I am unmuted. Once again, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Uh, naimbag nga malim kada kayo amin. Um, mm, good afternoon. Uh, at the outset, allow me please to thank the Commission on Higher Education, Office of Student Development and Services, for this splendid opportunity. Uh, the Philippine Society of NSDP Educators and Implementers Incorporated, led by Major Ermi Pava, with uh, uh, its Executive Director, uh, Dr. Florida Labugin, and the Regional Directors, uh, representing the uh, uh, 16 regions of the country, um, are happy uh, with this initiative. And uh, we are delighted uh, in the thought that uh, through this uh, webinar series, we will be able to address the uh, burning issue uh, in today's time, and that is on how to migrate uh, the delivery of NSTP uh, to what is uh, now uh, termed as uh, flexible learning in this so-called uh, new normal. Before I proceed, uh, allow me please to uh, orient uh, all the participants of the very aim of uh, this particular session. Uh, this uh, session of uh, mine aims to attain the following. Number one, deepen the understanding of NSTP implementers on the basic concepts, principles, and even considerations underpinning the transition of NSTP delivery to flexible learning. Uh, this is introductory. Uh, in the um, in the, in the coming uh, days, uh, we will also be uh, adding up to our basic uh, learning about uh, flexible learning by uh, way of giving more examples. Uh, but for this afternoon, it will be uh, an overview uh, in order for us to be able to uh, address basically the uh, many concerns of our uh, NSTP educators and implementers. Secondly, enhance the competencies of the NSTP implementers as to migration of delivery, and I'm referring to the uh, I'm referring to the initial steps. I'm referring to the planning, uh, initial planning of the uh, uh, the transition process. And lastly, we have forged better appreciation of uh, flexible learning as applied to NSTP. And of course, uh, to also forge the confidence to, to uh, sorry.
to uh, forge the confidence of the uh, implementers in going about the transition process. So allow me to begin by uh, noting that uh, the uh, present situation calls to the fore the adoption of, uh, of uh, a non-traditional and orthodox uh, uh, pedagogy or approach in uh, delivering uh, the different uh, curricular programs, uh, including uh, the National Service Training Program. Uh, the Philippines in particular is faced uh, with critical situation due to the so-called COVID-19 crisis. And uh, for higher education institutions, um, avoiding and limiting the risk of infection of the academic community has become primordial concern. Hence, with the implementation of community quarantine, conduct of classes uh, needed, to be, uh, uh, needed to be immediately uh, suspended. And of course, uh, we look for uh, ways by which we can uh, prepare for uh, a new way of uh, delivering our uh, curricular program. So that's the Herculean challenge on how to continue teaching and learning beyond the usual face-to-face -face instruction. Others would term it as in-person. You know? um, and uh, we will be using interchangeably terms like in-person and uh, uh, and face-to-face uh, -face learning in this particular uh, session of ours. So the uh, situation calls uh, for the paradigm, uh, calls for a paradigm shift uh, in so far as teaching and learning process in the Philippine higher education institution. And uh, this would necessitate collaboration among stakeholders and strengthening the culture of sharing of knowledge, resources, and best practices. That is why this particular webinar series was uh, conceptualized uh, under the uh, under the uh, initiative of uh, the Commission on Higher Education (OSDS), uh, led uh, by uh, Director Silvet. And uh, everyone is called uh, to be part of this transition or transformation towards new normal. To achieve this, humanity needs leadership and solidarity to defeat the coronavirus. Hence, we heal as one um, for our uh, battle cry. So what are we talking about? What, what do we have for this uh, webinar series? Basically, it's all about uh, pedagogy. It's all about shifting to a different pedagogy uh, that will basically address the requirements of the time. Um, based on the question that was uh, uh, asked uh, by uh, one of the participants earlier you know, um, are, are some of the apprehensions of uh, the many uh, educators and implementers of NSTP on how to go about the process of delivering the program. So uh, the uh, main intention of the webinar series is to reassure uh, our educators and implementers that uh, nothing will change except for the approach, except for the pedagogy. So. Given the minimum standards, we will uh, still push through with the implementation of the National Service Training Program under the guise of what we term as, uh, as a uh, flexible learning. So what do we mean by uh, flexible learning? Uh, flexible learning is a, pedagog a pedagogical approach allowing flexibility of time, place, and audience including but not solely focus on the use of technology. I'd like to highlight that. It's uh, allowing flexibility of time, place, and audience, including but not solely focus on the use of technology. And this is according to the work of Cassidy, Fu, Valley, Lomas, Ovel, and Reisman in 2016. Although it commonly uses the delivery methods of distance education, and facilities of education technology. This may vary depending on the levels of technology, availability of devices, internet connectivity, and level of digital literacy and approaches. And this is according to Macalde in 2020. So highlighting the very features of flexible pedagogy, it's a learner-centered educational strategy providing choices from the main dimensions of studies such as time and location of learning, resources for teaching and learning, instructional approaches, learning activities, support for teachers and learners. 
So in this manner, teaching and learning can be flexible rather than fixed. That's why it's called flexible. So flexible learning is not only focused on learning, it's also uh, focusing on teaching as well. So this can help promote easy, engaged, and effective learning. So the design and delivery of programs, courses, and learning interventions address learners' unique needs in terms of place, pace, process, and products of learning. That's according to Fermin in 2020. So it's basically involving use of digital and non-digital technology and covers both face-to-face, in-person learning and out-of-classroom learning modes of delivery or a combination of modes of delivery to what we call as blended approach. It ensures the continuity of inclusive and accessible education when the use of traditional modes of teaching is not feasible. I'd like to highlight that inclusive and accessible education. So these are two principles that cannot be um, put to aside in deciding for what uh, flexible learning options may be considered by any higher education institutions. So to uh, discuss further on the very uh, meaning of flexible learning, here's an entry from Lee and Mac Laughlin in 2010, uh, summing up the uh, main uh, um, main uh, features of uh, FL or flexible learning. So it's a set of educational approaches and systems concerned with providing learners with increased choice, convenience, and personalization to suit their needs. So this, in addition to the two basic principles mentioned on uh, inclusivity and accessibility, we have choice, convenience, and personalization to suit the needs of the learners. So provides learners with choices about where, when, and how learning occurs by using a range of technologies to support the teaching and the learning process. So uh, while the term that we are using is flexible learning, I, I, I would like to always emphasize that flexible learning is not only all about learning per se, it's uh, referring to the teaching and the learning process in general. So let's take a look at uh, another one uh, by uh, Landin uh, in uh, an electronic uh, uh, resource uh, defining, uh, that defining flexible learning as an idealized state where there is a mixture of educational philosophy, pedagogical strategies, delivering, delivery modalities and administrative structures allowing students to choose according to their learning needs, styles, and circumstances. So in principle, flex flexible learning approaches may be applied to any subject, just like uh, what we are uh, discussing right now. An accurate analysis of demands of the learner and of the viability of the approach is highly recommended. So summing up our discussion about flexible learning, so allow me to focus on four uh, important ideas. Number one, um, it uh, implies uh, that processes of teaching and learning can be liberated from the constraints of time and place. So disregarding time, so uh, we are no longer structured you know, by time and place you know, with flexible learning. And this is according to the work of uh, uh, Wellems in 2005 and Ellington in 1997. Uh, further, it provides learners with a choice about how, where, and when the learning process will take place. As mentioned earlier, it has to be learning learner-centered for, for flexible learning to, to succeed. And therefore, uh, it is important to consider okay, the, uh, the uh, standpoints or viewpoints or of the, uh, uh, the status and the conditions of our uh, learners. Um, this is also uh, corroborated in the work of Granger in 2012, uh, pointing out that flexible learning stands in opposition to linear learner le learning. And uh, linear learning basically is the approach which involves pedagogical strategies concerning 
program centeredness so this is the uh, distinction uh, between linear learning and flexible learning um, flexible learning is uh, student centered or learner centered while uh, while linear learning learning is uh, basically a pro program centered which is directed conducted controlled and guided by the study program so remember that uh, we used to uh, deliver uh, curricular programs guided by a study program so now we are trying to veer away with what we used to do okay before before the pandemic no? so now we are trying to shift from program centered to student centered delivery so it stands in uh, um, the uh, linear learning actually is the opposite no? and uh, here we uh, uh, give you know, more uh, of uh, of uh, considerations uh, to the concerns of the learners in flexible learning and lastly by Kulis and Munin in 2001 uh, flexible learning is mainly used to encompass distance learning and open learning so these are two additional terms okay that uh, may be encountered in the task of uh, migrating okay, your program delivery to what is termed as flexible learning or flexible learning options or flexible learning delivery or flexible learning modes okay so um, its scope may be much wider once it may also be found in face-to-face -face context groups okay. so always remember about these ideas because uh, this would uh, uh, with, would uh, uh, provide basic understanding about flexible learning now why do we shun upon uh, embracing flexible learning no, um, some if not many of uh, uh, my associates uh, my uh, my colleagues no, would have uh, apprehensions no, uh, when it comes to uh, transitioning to flexible learning this can be attributed no, to the this misnomers that we have in relation to flexible learning and uh, allow me to uh, identify uh, five of the myths that we associate with flexible learning um, some would say flexible learning is in, is a synonym of distance education so uh, sometimes we are boxed in a pejorative stereotype that uh, flexible learning is is uh, equivocal to distance education another myth is flexible learning is only all about learning okay and number three fl is a new phenomenon uh, fl is all we need and fl is more effective because it is fun now how do we correct this since these are misnomers so let us try to uh to uh, reverse okay uh the uh, situation so therefore uh, flexible learning is not only all about synonym of uh, it's not uh, uh equating it to distance education Okay. Actually, in the work of uh, uh, Coolies and Munin in 2001, it was noted that it is not necessarily so. Flexible can involve options in course resources, in types of learning activities, in media to support learning, and many other possibilities. There is more than distance that can vary. Besides, distance learning may contain components of N uh, flexibility itself. So when whenever we talk about distance education per se it might be equated to inflexibility which is uh which is uh, quite ironic you know? whenever we talk about uh flexibility as uh, observed uh, as or as promoted in flexible learning number two um flexible learning is not only only all about learning you know? Uh, in the work of Campbell uh, it, and uh, others in 2011, they uh, quip that the real meaning of uh, flexible learning is not unilateral. It applies uh, 
it equally applies to flexible teaching. Okay? And flexible teaching concerns the design and implementation of the course and assessment of tasks in a way that ensures that the array of flexible measures adopted may benefit the learner. Remember, the uh, uh, choice uh, of uh, a strategy by a teacher or by a mentor or by a trainer in so far as NSTP is concerned, if we talk about FL, it has to uh, address uh, the learners. Okay. So in sum, flexible learning also encompasses flexible teaching. Number three, flexible learning is not a new phenomenon. No? Um, still in the work of Kulis and Munin in 2001, flexible learning is not a brand new phenomenon brought about by the practical means of the digital era. Students have for a long time chosen from a variety of courses, studied their textbooks in a variety of locations sometimes, and selected from a variety of resources in the library. And this will also support the works of uh, different uh, uh, theories like uh, Gardner and Gardner in the multiple intelligences. Okay? So it's not a new phenomenon when we talk about flexible learning. Number four, uh, flexible learning is not all we need. No? Uh, flexible learning, uh, this uh, statement, item number four, concerns the ideal character acquired by the term. That is, people judge it to be invariably good. There are advantages, but they have up to now been treated as unquestionable and very little research has been dedicated to a deep understanding of its challenges. And lastly, uh, flexible learning is not more effective because it is fun. And according to the work of Granger in 2012, the assumption that flexible learning is more enjoyable than linear learning is nowadays embedded in the collective unconscious. This is similar to the assumption that one learns better in an enjoyable or fun environment. For this reason, many people believe that flexible learning is a more effective approach when it is fun. However, based on the information presented uh, in the work of uh, Granger in 2012, one may uh, say that outcomes of combination between enjoyment and flexible learning are not as positive as the popular imagination has constructed. Okay. So, um, in summation, uh, referring to uh, the works of Kulis Munin in 2011, Campbell and others in 2011, as well as the work of Ranger 2012, uh, it points out to uh, the idea that learner satisfaction is not necessarily a reliable or positive predictor of learning, even in flexible learning environment. Now, what are the challenges? Okay, what are the challenges in so far as uh, uh, flexible learning is concerned? So when dealing with complex content, flexible learning may prompt cognitive overload. Okay, that's number one. Number two, we have distance learning or e-learning may become inflexible due to technology accessibility disparities and lack of motivation in asynchronous learning environments. Dr. Alfonso earlier made mention about uh, some uh, problems that are encountered alongside with uh, synchronous and even asynchronous uh, uh, types of uh, learning uh, mode and this we will discuss in more specific terms as we try to uh, understand the uh, present situation in our respective localities. Okay. Then we have individual differences in cognitive load and inflexibilities related to distance learning. Okay. So uh, let's take a look at uh, this particular illustration. Okay. Uh, this figure um, is uh, referring to the interaction between uh, learner control and training content complexity for predicting overall cognitive learning. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, illustration okay, explains that a flexible learning approach for complex content has uh, not actually been a determinant okay, of uh, learner success. Granger suggests that the performance of learners inserted in flexible learning environments 
uh, should be strongly influenced by personal goal orientation and referring to uh, motivational level and uh, learning behavior of the learner. So the higher the goal orientation, the higher the performance in a learner-controlled flexible scenario, regardless of the complexity of the content. So this assertion enforces the idea that flexible learning tends to highlight motivational individual differences which are seen as disadvantage in the learning processes. Now, um, let us talk about uh, how we now, on the basis of what we discussed you know, for uh, the different challenges and the myths that uh, uh, are connected or that are associated with uh, flexible learning. Here is an Adi-inspired uh, model. Uh, it's a framework. Uh, that uh, is uh, used uh, for instructional design. And ADI stands for Analysis, Design, Development, um, Implementation, at, and Evaluation. Okay? So this particular figure would sum up how we go about the process of, of uh, preparing for the work of uh, migration or transitioning of the delivery mode to what is now uh, termed as flexible learning. So I tried to, uh, to have this in uh, basic units of analysis focusing on three aspects. So we have the learner profile, what are the issues and considerations, and then we have uh, the graduate profile. So let's take a look at how it will look like. So focusing on the learner profile, so we have questions to support the, uh, uh, the assessment uh, process where we uh, look into uh, the profile of uh, our clients, uh, who are your learners and uh, what do they come with. Okay, so this is the basic uh, step in so far as uh, transitioning or migrating your delivery mode into what is uh, termed as a flexible learning approach, okay? So um, we will have a more specific example as we talk about how we will do it in NSTP, uh, but for now let us try to uh, focus on the next as aspect of uh, the process. So after having a focus on the learner, uh, uh, learner uh, profile, then we look into what are the issues and considerations. Okay? So here we will uh, ask uh, the basic question, how will you design your course? And uh, this would uh, account for support, learning, access, content. Okay? So for issues and considerations that we will have to make in the uh, course of uh, migration or transition. And lastly, uh, the graduate profile. Okay, so in the guide profile, um, penultimately, uh, we uh, ask, okay, uh, in the process, what do we want uh, them to leave with, okay, for basis of the ultimate goal, which is to determine who will they become in the future, okay. So this is particularly true in so far as NSTP is concerned. So allow me to forego, uh, in the meantime, uh, the following slides to um, to uh, apply it to uh, NSTP, okay? So on the basis of the uh, earlier presented illustration, allow me to put across a simplistic model uh, that, would, that may serve for basis of uh, our transition, okay? So we uh, have for the first box the uh, uh, NSTP trainee, so it's... Uh, uh, looking into what uh, what uh, uh, what do do we expect of our 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 students or our trainees and and uh, in the in, along the process we take note of the issues and the concerns and uh, and uh, and uh, look into what uh, would uh, uh, be the the output or the outcome in so far as uh, NSTP is concerned. So we have uh, for the uh, last box, uh, what we want of our uh, NSTP uh, trainees. And this is 
pursuant to Republic Act Number no. 9163, otherwise known as the National Service Training Program um, Act of 2001. Okay. And uh, uh, I think uh, we are all familiar with the mandate of the uh, said Republic Act that our graduates will eventually form part of uh, the National Service Reserve Corps or the Army Reserve uh, Command. Okay, so um, the uh, pre these slides uh, would help us also in the process of looking into what uh, are uh, further considerations. Okay, um, in uh, so far as uh, flexible uh, learning transition is concerned. So we take a look at uh, the work of uh, Coolis in 1996. Uh, for determining opportunities for more flexible learning options for the learner. And I'm not going to discuss this in particular. Uh, this uh, was made part of the slide so that it will also guide you in the process. But uh, this will talk about the more specific uh, uh, opportunities. And on this slide, and in the succeeding slides, still uh, in the work, of, uh, lifted from the work of police, but this time in 1998, uh, flexibility dimensions vis-a-vis no, -vis the course management system. So uh, here we take a look at how okay, initial planning uh, may be done no, in so far as uh, migration and transition of uh, the delivery mode is concerned. Okay. And uh, this was uh, covered in the discussion of uh, Dr. Alfonso. So, for purposes of uh, for purposes of uh, emphasis, allow me to just go over and have it uh, on the basis of uh, transitioning our delivery in, in the national service training program. So, the time and again, uh, we always give highlight to the fact that uh, flexible learning should be learner centered, and this is uh, to provide the learners the most flexibility on the learning content, uh, schedules, access, and innovative assessment, making use of digital and non-digital tools. Okay. So the main objective of flexible learning is provide them no, with the most flexibility. Okay. And uh, in, uh, so far as uh, NSTP implementation is concerned, Okay, uh, we, we can, uh, uh, at the outset, look into uh, what are the uh, requirements of our learners okay, and uh, match the, uh, their requirements to the available uh, resources of the higher education institution. So it may not be necessarily a digital tool, okay, but it can be a combination of digital and non-digital tool. Okay. Number two, um, higher education institutions shall exercise, shall continue to exercise their judgment in the deployment of available flexible learning and other alternative modes of delivery in lieu of in-campus learning or face-to-face -face modality. Please note that the exercise of discretion by the higher education institutions and their faculty must be reasonable, transparent, and outcomes-based validated. And this is uh, according to the uh, guidelines uh, as is stipulated in the Commission of, on Higher Education COVID Advisory Number 6. So reasonable, transparent, and outcomes-based validated. Uh, so um, in uh, so doing, it is uh, important that we uh, also consider uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, viewpoints of different stakeholders. Okay? It should not be uh, a one uh, one way ticket you know, where the higher education will solely decide on uh, how flexible uh, learning uh, uh, approach will be implemented higher education institutions uh, shall decide on the most viable form of flex uh, flexible learning and teaching Okay, so when we talk about viability, we're talking about feasibility, we're talking about workability, we are talking about uh, doability. Okay? And uh, 
whenever we uh, address these uh, issues, we must always have it on the basis of capability, uh, existing condition, national government agency guidelines, and local government unit advisories. As was pointed out earlier in the discussion of uh, Dr. Alfonso, the, uh, there is no such thing as one size fits all for flexible learning. Uh, the least that we can do through this uh, webinar series is to uh, give you okay, a smorgasbord of uh, possible flexible learning options, which you think or which you uh, might consider uh, for basis of your, in your uh, implementation. Okay? So it will be dependent on many factors. It will not be okay, a. Uh, uh, it will not be something that it, uh, is uh, uh, on the basis of what has been done by others. Of course, we, we can learn from the good, if not the best, uh, practices of others. But uh, it should be okay, um, it should be uh, consistent uh, and in line uh, with the the, uh, the uh, requirements of uh, your own. Okay, uh, locality or your 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 higher education institution, okay. and then uh, we also talk about uh, uh, in terms of sustainability and monitoring. The higher education institutions should, should submit you know, for information their learning continuity plan. Later, uh, I will be sharing to you our, our modest output. You know, um, it's not the best, no, but it's something that we can have for basis of uh, discussion and uh, in order for uh, the uh, higher education institutions uh, who have not yet uh, uh, formulated one no, to, uh, to uh, give them idea on how to go about it and what uh, will be the more specific contents no, of uh, the learning continuity plan. Okay, um, and uh, it shall reflect the framework and system for the transition and integration of flexible learning approaches and overall absorptive capacity of the higher education institution. And in order to articulate its preparedness and response interventions that reduces disruption of classes and impact of natural calamities, making continuity of learning more resilient. So we're talking about. Uh, higher education institutions um, exercising uh, resiliency uh, in, uh, in uh, addressing the uh, requirements of the present time. So the learning continuity plan may include uh, the following. Uh, we have the executive summary and uh, of course the systems and procedures adopted for transition to flexible learning including key people, modalities, resources, and support services for students and faculty, assessment of effectiveness, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so we have also policies on enrollment, attendance, reporting, and updating of student-teacher engagement and others. Now, for example, enrollment. Um, we might be accustomed to uh, an on-site enrollment, but with uh, what is happening around and by, by uh, dictates of the uh, uh, guidelines set by uh, duly authorized uh, 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 by, by duly constituted authorities, I should say, you know, we are bound to, uh, to uh, comply with the uh, guidelines set you know, by the agencies of government like the Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Diseases and even the local government units you know, because the implementation of uh, uh, of uh, of specific guidelines may also be dependent on the uh, situation on the ground. So um, we, the, uh, the uh, implementation of flexible learning will also be in accordance you know, with the status in terms of, uh, uh, of uh, the different local government units are concerned. Okay? So uh, talking about uh, on-site, we might also uh, rethink the way we do enrollment you know, in our respective higher education institutions. So, because not all are already implementing the so-called online or e-enrollment, uh, 
um, there are there are uh, uh, higher education institutions that are uh, still you know, uh, observing uh, the on-site enrollment. Okay, so uh, we will have it part of the learning continuity plan. Of course, attendance. You, know, um, you heard uh, Dr. Alfonso saying that uh, not not yet for for uh, for face-to-face -face or in-person uh, in instruction. Uh, even even uh, there were uh, pronouncements uh, sometime uh, in uh, last April that uh, by September, face-to-face okay, uh, -face may uh, already be uh, permitted. So the flexible learning scheme you know, will give us, you know, will allow us you know, to, uh, to continue with uh, the task of educating our young people you know, we, without being restrained and constrained by, by the conditions, by the, by the requirements you know, as uh, prescribed by uh, the government agencies like IATF, or even the Commission on Higher Education and the like. Okay, so reporting and updating of student-teacher engagement, grading system, even assessment, because uh, as, uh, as we have uh, mentioned several times already that uh, the uh, uh, implementation of flexible learning should be student-centered. So we might also rethink on how we uh, do the assessment, uh, uh, we might uh, be uh, shifting to uh, other modes of assessment uh, other than uh, the usual practices <laughs> and pencil test. Okay. And uh, it was also made mention in the, in the discussion of uh, Dr. Alfonso, okay, uh, issues on uh, intellectual property rights and even OER. And um, actually, the uh, uh, pandemic, the situation has, uh, has uh, opened you know, so many doors of opportunity and of sharing of resources and of uh, knowledge sharing uh, through OER. And uh, it was also pointed out, uh, Director Silver, here that we need to also uh, contribute to the OER uh, when it comes. Uh, when it comes to uh, the delivering of a training program. So maybe after this webinar series, we can contribute uh, significantly to the, to the repository of uh, resources okay, um, in connection with, uh, with uh, the National Service Training Program. Um, constant dialogue with LGU, regional IATF, and other relevant stakeholders to be updated and a possible partner in the preparation uh, during COVID crisis situation. I uh, had this, uh, this uh, 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 informal uh, discussion, informal talk with, with uh, one uh, NSTP director, and uh, she mentioned to me that uh, uh, the uh, uh, higher education institution of which she represents is uh, trying to help the local government unit in establishing uh, quarantine facilities because the local government unit can no longer accommodate uh, the uh, growing number of uh, the escalating uh, number of uh, cases in their area. So um, partnership uh, is uh, also essential and, and uh, we will need to have it also part of the continuity plan, how we intend to maintain a functional relationship you know, with the LGU, with the local IATF, and other relevant stakeholders, because uh, in that way, you know, we will uh, be able to uh, address squarely okay, the uh, problem you know, uh, brought about by, uh, by COVID-19. Health and uh, safety protocols in accordance with uh, IATF and local government units. Uh, I, I think this is basic. It is uh, important that uh, we uh, have you know, uh, already established in our respective higher education institution health and safety protocols. You know? And uh, in addition to the requirement of having to also uh, create a, a local task force in your university. 
overview and orientation guide for students and teachers. So there must also be uh, a communication plan, how you uh, communicate okay, uh, to the different stakeholders, not necessarily uh, the students and the teachers only, but uh, to extend uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, sharing of information to all the stakeholders of the institution. Then mechanisms for continuous uh, quality improvement. So uh, the uh, situation should not be an excuse for uh, for malperformance or or under quality for that matter. Um, we are not talking about compromising quality just because we are in uh, a, in uh, a disadvantage or situation. So it it should still be you know, given uh, primordial concern. You no. Know, uh, quality uh, of uh, education that we deliver to our stakeholders. Okay. So moving on on the general guidelines I set by the Commission on Higher Education, um, flexible learning should complement outcomes-based education approach. Okay. So um, the uh, uh, the uh, flexible learning uh, should work. Uh, should uh, work hand in hand no, with with other approaches like uh, outcomes ba uh, outcomes based education, and this is to allow flexibility of uh, for the higher education institutions to employ various means of delivery and assessment, as long as they can show the achievement of the set learning outcomes for each course or subject for the program. But let us uh, let us also remember that in the course of uh, so doing, that we identify the minimum learning essentials because um, in times of pandemic, uh, we may not be able to deliver uh, the, the full course. Okay? Um, and so we need to, uh, at the outset, better mean what are the minimum learning essentials. So the most essentials will be given, uh, given the priority. You know? Uh, because, as uh, you will know, uh, um, just like, for example, what had happened when we uh, uh, were uh, put to a lockdown situation um, for uh, three months or so, okay, that the amount of time you know, um, spent in, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, school is, uh, has, um, has uh, been uh commuted commuted to to uh to uh, uh some uh, number of uh, days uh, because of the uh because of the lockdown so in terms of learning content higher education institutions shall review all their curricular offerings and make the necessary ad uh, adjustments or modifications in the curricular structures programs of study so to, towards the end of this particular session, we will have a revisiting of the uh, program of instruction, of, uh, particularly uh, involving uh, the 25-hour uh, common module, okay? Because, uh, uh, because uh, uh, considering the uh, diversity of our participants in uh, today's session, so we uh, are addressing uh, the requirements uh, in the three uh, program components of uh, of uh, the uh, national service training program okay so uh, what do we consider in uh, the task of uh, reviewing the curricular offerings uh, just to ensure that uh, necessary adjustments or modifications are 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 uh, undertaken uh, so we have uh, Determining of alternative options in the design, delivery, pedagogy, and assessment mechanisms that can be delivered to the students through various modalities. So uh, the work of transitioning, actually, after having done an honest-to-goodness assessment is, uh, is uh, some sort of a checklist uh, exercise. So given the minimum learning essentials, uh, what do we intend to do okay, uh, with the different topics uh, in so far as the different options are concerned, and uh, of course, considering the resources of the uh, higher education institution and even the area of operation, and of course, the capacity of uh, 
the uh, implementers themselves. So in terms of learning content, okay, um, higher education institutions shall review all curricular offerings. Uh, it was already uh, mentioned. Uh, and uh, in terms of uh, management of learners, the higher education institution shall provide mechanisms to inform and orient learners on the learning system to be implemented. Okay. So um, this can be in terms of course packages. Uh, the uh, uh, formulation of course packages uh, will be addressed in the last session. So we will be uh, having some sort of a write shop and uh, as uh, mentioned uh, in the suggestion of uh, Dr. Alfonso, we can uh, go for a uh, concurrent session. So we can uh, have one perhaps for the CWTS group, one for the LTS, and another for the ROTC in terms of the uh, uh, course packages uh, for, for the students. And uh, higher education institutions shall establish means for student and teacher engagement uh, communication, which may include texting, uh, electronic mail or email, chat, instant messaging and other means, you know, whichever is convenient and appropriate and available in order to ensure personalized, effective, efficient, and timely mentoring and feedback mechanism. So, but we, we should not expect that all students have a strong connectivity or have more or less reliable connection all the time. Um, there are areas, uh, uh, there are some areas that are not even uh, uh, having uh, uh having a connection at all times so we need to have all this considered in the course of uh, deciding on what uh, flexible learning options may be uh, considered higher education institutions uh, shall explore establishing linkages with the relevant national local government agencies civil society organizations telecommunication companies professional organizations international organizations and other institutions and what for and this is to strengthen and or complement existing resources. Remember that uh, the pandemic you know, has put us in a very uh, disadvantaged uh, economic situation. Um, and this is uh, particularly true uh, um, in the higher education institutions, especially the private ones, uh, where they are uh, strained you know, by the fact that uh, the uh, enrollment has gone down in most, if not all, higher education institutions because of, uh, of the lingering effects of the three-month uh, lockdown. And then we have higher education institutions are encouraged to maximize the use of technology uh, to support learning and teaching. Okay? So um, we, uh, will, uh, we are talking about the uh, use of technology to support learning and teaching uh, by uh, by uh, doing any of the following. So determination of level of technology to be used for the delivery of programs based on connectivity of students. Um, the, there was a matrix that was uh, uh, provided to you by Dr. Alfonso to look into the uh, uh, current state of, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, our students when it comes to connectivity. So from there you can identify um, how you will uh, consider online means to support your flexible learning uh, modality. Establishment of a multimedia or learning resource center to provide uh, technical support to faculty members in the development of IT-enabled and IT-mediated instructional materials. Um, remember that uh, the teacher also plays a pivotal role in so far as uh, ensuring the success of, uh, of uh, flexible learning uh, delivery. And uh, we should uh, have uh, part of our uh, priority, uh, the training of our uh, uh, faculty members. So uh, with the ubiquity of uh, the use of internet, in uh, some, if not uh, all parts of the, of the archipelago. Maybe we can take advantage of the free webinars uh, uh, on uh, flexible learning and other related uh, topics. Uh, and uh, this we can also 
involve our faculty members in order to better prepare them for the work of uh, uh, migration or transitioning the delivery to flexible learning. Access utilization of electronic library and or available open uh, educational resources. I think I already have mentioned this earlier. And uh, utilization of learning management system. Um, you, you have an option, okay? It's either proprietary or non-proprietary. We have uh, free uh, platforms. You can, you can uh, have a try of the uh, free versions of uh, learning management system. And, and the institution may also consider to uh, contract the services of an LMS provider, okay? So at this stage, uh, in the implementation of flexible learning, I, I, I don't think uh, it is uh, mandatory that we have uh, uh, to contract the services of an LMS provider, um, especially if the, if the uh, students as well as the faculty members are, are not yet, uh, are, are not yet uh, prepared in, uh, in, uh, in uh, using uh, LMS part of a flexible learning mode. Okay. So moreover, higher education institutions shall implement or explore grants and or support capacity building programs for administrators, faculty and staff on transitioning to flexible learning. Um, it shall also ensure that health and safety protocols are maintained at all times. And that's basic, that's fundamental. Um, the reason why we're having a shift to flexible learning because we want uh, to uh, uh, safeguard okay, the uh, welfare of our students, even the faculty and all the stakeholders. A higher education institutions shall also establish means to remind students, uh, uh, teachers and other school personnel of the health and the safety protocols through the display of reminders in, in conspicuous uh, areas uh, within the school premises. Okay? So, that should not uh, be missed no, in the delivering of uh, uh, programs uh, via flexible learning because that is the very essence of why we are having a shift to FL. Higher education institutions are encouraged to form consortia, coalition, networking. This is also in consonance with the earlier mention to explore uh, support uh, uh, coming from uh, outside the uh, organizations okay. and the implementation of flexible learning by higher education institutions for both uh, undergraduate and graduate programs as uh, discussed by uh, uh, Dr. Alfonso shall be guided by the principles of outcomes based education and the applicable PSGs to assure quality of teaching and learning so the same is true with the national service training program um, we have uh, at the least no uh, um, uh, been approved of the uh, revised uh, minimum standards uh, for uh, the common and also the specific uh, modules. Okay, so summing up our uh, discussion of the guidelines no, is uh, the uh, the last item no, on the implementation of uh, flexible learning that should uh, be uh, uh, observing the principles of uh, outcomes-based education. So let's have a review at this point in time on what outcomes-based education is all about in the work of uh, Killen in 2000. So there are three basic premises no, that were, uh, that were uh, advanced by Killen in his work. So all students can learn and succeed, but not all at the same time or in the same way. So uh, this, is uh, in line uh, with the ver very principle uh, of uh, flexible learning. So we look into uh, mixing and matching the different uh, uh, flexible learning modes to the requirements of our different learners. Successful learning promotes even more successful learner learning in the schools and teachers control the conditions that determine whether or not students are successful at school learning. So. Um, aside from the shift you know, from the uh, usual face-to-face -face or the traditional approach to delivering NSDP is the shift uh, in teaching and learning, uh, which is uh, also co considered student-centered, that is outcomes-based education. And uh, whenever we talk about uh, outcomes-based education, um, we 
also factor in the contributions of William Spady, you know, defining outcomes based education as defining, designing, building. William Spady. Focusing name, and organizing everything in an education system on the things of lasting significance that we ultimately want every learner to demonstrate successfully as the result of their learning experience in that system. So outcomes. So outcomes-based educational system involves two essential aspects. Okay? Developing a clear set of learning outcomes around which all the system's components can be focused. And number two, establishing the conditions and opportunities within the system that enable and encourage all students to achieve those essential outcomes. So it is to be noted that the foundations of outcomes-based education is the learning outcomes. So we start from there. So outcomes are not values. These are not beliefs, attitudes, or psychological states of mind. Rather, these are clear learning results that we want the students to demonstrate at the end of the significant uh, end of the significant from uh, that significant from others. Okay? So these paradigms are also transformative because such aim to develop the autonomous thinking and critical reflection and consciousness of the students from them to possess the ability to analyze, pose questions, and take action on the social, political, cultural, and economic context that influence and shape their lives. So if we will have this in uh, terms of NSTP uh, and uh, looking into the basic, okay, uh, basic uh, uh, aims of the national service training program okay it is uh, provided for in the implementing rules uh, of uh, ra 9163 the guiding principles okay so it is stipulated in rule one on guiding principles section one while it is the prime duty of the government to serve and protect its citizens in in turn, it shall be the responsibility of all citizens to defend the security and promote the general, general welfare of the uh, state. Premise on this uh, is the very uh, mandate of the program, okay, which is aimed at enhancing civic consciousness and defense preparedness in the youth you know, by developing the ethics of service and patriotism while undergoing training in any of the three program components. Okay. So, um, in the course of uh, transitioning or migrating, it is very essential to uh, leverage, to start with or to have for a springboard for discussion of, of uh, the transition or migration process, the very uh, uh, provisions of uh, Republic Act 9163. Okay. So, we discuss further okay, uh, by looking at uh, certain characteristics that uh, uh, will best describe flexible, uh, flexible learning. And uh, sum up in this particular slide a set of three uh, characteristics. And uh, we have for the first uh, characteristic, uh, according to Good and others in 2007, the second one by Lewis and Spencer in 1986, and uh, which uh, conforms to the work of Good in uh, 2007, and the last one by Coolis in 1998. So, so the first characteristic, you know, it offers learners rich learning choices from multiple dimensions of study. Okay? So we have uh, different options, choices, choices, choices. Okay? And uh, we need to uh, maximize the almost limited uh, resources okay, and possibilities of having to deliver NSTP um, under the guise of uh, flexible learning. Okay? Number two, uh, it applies learner-centered constructivism approach, which is indicated by a shift from the teacher taking learning responsibilities 
to the learner taking these responsibilities as well. Okay. And lastly, we have learners are granted to variety of choices and take more responsibilities for their own learning. Therefore, flexible learning requires learners to be more skilled at the self-regulation of goal setting, self-monitoring, and make adjustments and instructors to promote active learning so that learning in such situations can be engaging and effective. Okay, so always remember this set of characteristics of flexible learning. So here we have the dimension. So when and where the learning occurs, what and how uh, students will learn how to deliver instruction, what strategies could be used for organizing learning activities, what types of learning resources should be provided to students, and what kind of supports and services should be provided for uh, students and instructors. So I'm not going to discuss uh, further on this, um, as these were already covered in the previous discussions. So allow me to just sum up in the manner as follows. So let's uh, sum it up you know, by coming up with our framework for transitioning our program in NSTP, I uh, coined uh, an acrostic, uh, an acronym uh, to uh, more or less summarize our discussions you know, from the uh, discussion of the basic uh, guidelines by uh, Dr. Alfonso and the, uh, the uh, discussion points we have presented uh, uh, earlier okay, in this uh, framework uh, create. Okay, so uh, how do we uh, how do we go about the process of uh, transitioning our delivery program to flexible learning? So we have uh, C for conduct survey or inventory that is very important. Um, we should uh, start with uh, with uh, uh, looking into the uh, characteristics of our students. Uh, looking into uh, the uh, uh, different issues, the different concerns they have at the moment, okay? And uh, that's uh, fundamental, okay? In the process of uh, migrating your approach to uh, flexible learning. And second, uh, based on the results of the survey or inventory, okay, you do the revisiting of the curriculum. Uh, in the revisiting of the curriculum, okay, you will need to have for basis of uh, of your review, okay, um, uh, PSGs. Uh, in the case of NSTP, we have uh, the Republic Act, we have RA uh, 9163, and of course, uh, we have the Implementing Rules and Regulation, IRR. Um, the uh, latest, though, under the initiative of the OCD, uh, led by uh, Director Wanko and the other agencies of the government, like the Commission on Higher Education, DND, and others, you know, are in the process of uh, reviewing the latest IRR in order to make it uh, more relevant you know, to the requirements of the times. Okay. So, um, you have this for basis of uh, revisiting the curriculum. Also your vision, mission, and goals. It has to also be in line or attuned to your uh, vision, mission, and goals. So such that your, your syllabus uh, that is OB inspired no, are anchored on the uh, VMG of the uh, institution. Okay? And uh, after having reviewed the curriculum, now you can enhance the, the curriculum so you can uh, enhanced by, uh, by of course, uh, uh, looking into what can be uh, what can be improved. You know? It can be in terms of uh, in terms of uh, determining the uh, most essential uh, uh, learning uh, essen uh, learning uh, uh, outcomes okay? in order to uh, maximize okay, the the limited time and the type of uh, learning modes that uh, you will implement. And uh, of course, uh, talking about uh, flexible learning, we adapt the learning environment. To adapt is to suit it to the present uh, situation, 
in order to um, in order to uh, uh, maximize uh, available resources. Then we have training the implementers is very important as well. Um, and that is why uh, webinars like this uh, are, are very uh, uh, popular nowadays. And lastly, evaluate as necessary. And, and this is uh, cyclical in nature. So after having evaluated, then we conduct again survey in order for us to be able to, uh, real, uh, to know the real score, and what's happening on the ground, and then do the revisitation of the curriculum again. So this is... Uh, this uh, framework is uh, uh, observed in a continuum, okay? So that's the uh, CREATE framework. So we begin with having an inventory. It is important that we have to have uh, a survey conducted uh, among our students and even the faculty members to look into the needs of our learners and to match it to the uh, resources and the uh, resources of the higher education institution and of course the uh, capability of the uh, the capability of the um, of the teachers or the trainers okay. then we have revisiting the curriculum so you will need to review um, in the last few slides though uh, I, I will uh, I will give a, a very simple uh, format uh, with which you can start with uh, in the revisiting of the NSTP curriculum. And then we have uh, enhancing the curriculum. So uh, part of the review is uh, the identification of what we can do to, uh, to improve, to upscale, uh, or to, uh, or to uh, uh, enrich the curriculum. And then how do we uh, adapt to the uh, learning environment in order for uh, for flexible learning to flourish. Then we have uh, the uh, requirement for training the implementers and everyone else, even the students. So say, for example, if we introduce learning management system, it, it's very important that the students uh, also are, are, uh, are trained on how, uh, how LMS works or how the different uh, uh, the how the different uh, flexible learning modes pr will proceed okay so that is very important in ensuring the success of any uh, any flexible learning mode that you introduce part of uh, your uh, institutional delivery of the national service training program and uh, it is uh, a sound management practice to always evaluate in order for you to uh, to determine the impact or that are mean the, light, the, the success of, uh, of your initiative. So this was uh, shown by uh, Dr. Alfonso earlier. So part of the survey uh, can uh, be uh, inspired you know, by this particular matrix because uh, as we uh, go for flexible learning, uh, an option can be to introduce uh, online approaches or online modes. So in, uh, in doing so, it is uh, essential that we look into uh, the technology category of the learners. Okay? So um, in this particular uh, matrical uh, uh, presentation, okay, we identify the category from high level technology down to low level technology and the corresponding descriptions for availability of these devices, internet connectivity, level of digital literacy, and flexible learning approach. So um, it will vary. You know, the, uh, the, the category of the students from area to area. Okay? So others might uh, be uh, having high level technology in this, perhaps are those in the urban centers where they are equipped with laptops, mobile phones, uh, tablets, and desktops, and uh, where internet connectivity is quite reliable, and, uh, and considering their proficiency when it comes to digital literacy, they're highly proficient. And so we must prescribe online learning or blended learning technology. So when we say blended, it's a combination of uh, online and, and the other forms. 
However, if we are talking about uh, um, beginner for level of digital literacy and having poor or no internet connection or intermittent connection, and uh, of course uh, where some students, uh, if not majority of them, uh, are, are, have no access to uh, mobile phones or technology in general. So we can prescribe for the modular instruction. Okay? So um, in this particular uh, situation, we can prescribe mostly offline activities. So we can uh, have, uh, uh, have uh, in place of the online uh, modular instruction, okay? Uh, where the uh, students can uh, have you know, the uh, the accomplishment of certain tasks as uh, contained in the modules on a self pacing um, on a self uh, pacing uh, mode or or otherwise yes so now, moreover, uh, talking about uh, the uh, the uh, delivery Sir of CJ? yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, na nabago na po to slide na to, so please don't discuss this yeah. anymore. Papa. So I'm down to the last slide of this uh, presentation, but I will have to share to you other slides. Uh, this can be an activity that may be undertaken. Okay. Uh, after this particular session, um, here is a template on how you go about the process of, uh, of initially doing your review of your curriculum. Okay? So as mentioned earlier, um, the examples that I will be giving will be, uh, will be uh, in terms of the common modules. So we begin with uh, the module on citizenship training. So we can uh, come up with a similar presentation like uh, for the first column, we determine the uh, course content and then we have the, expect the, out the learning outcome and then identify based on the outcome uh, and uh, depending on the results of your survey and uh, inventory, we identify the most suitable offline or online modes or combination of both. Okay. So, I will now uh, shift to uh, this particular. Uh, so as meant by Director Silvet earlier, um, um, this uh, revised minimum standards for national service training program uh, modules uh, was uh, uh, set, this set of standards uh, was uh, approved by the commission and uh, uh, allow me to have you for a walkthrough of uh, what uh, we have for uh, the revisions uh, applied to the common modules. If you will recall, okay, uh, on top of the five, uh, as identified in the latest IRR, we have uh, additional uh, modules uh, in, the, in the delivery of the 25 hours. But uh, for the revised, uh, we uh, can, uh, uh, we, we can observe that uh, the topics are limited to the five as identified in the in the uh, implementing rules and regulations. So we start with the citizenship training, and uh, aside from the uh, uh, five topics, uh, we have also set of uh, specific and uh, optional modules. But uh, the focus of attention for for this uh, session will be on the common modules. So we have the scope of instruction, the number of hours, the methodologies. We, we can uh, have, you know, as a start of uh, uh, 
uh, point, the methodologies like a structured learning exercises or SLEs, lecture, film showing, uh, role playing. Maybe we can identify what can be uh, done on an individual, uh, individualized basis. Because uh, as uh, mentioned earlier, we fear that uh, we might not uh, have part of the flexible uh, learning delivery face-to-face -face just yet because of uh, the escalating uh, cases uh, in the different parts of the country. So it is safer that we identify this point in time what activities, what exercises, what methodologies can be done on an individualized uh, uh, basis or approach. Okay? So uh, an activity that may be uh, uh, engaged into by the faculty, by the trainers of NSTP as uh, we, uh, as we uh, transition or migrate our uh, program delivery is to uh, look into what activities uh, can be performed on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Okay? It's like, for example, um, can uh, film showing be prescribed? Yes, the, the answer is yes. So we can have it part of, of uh, the uh, activities that uh, may be introduced. Uh, what about role-playing? Maybe not role-playing, uh, or it can be uh, an alternative activity to replace the usual role playing, you know, where we can uh, prescribe uh, maybe uh, 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 we we can uh, have uh, the uh, trainee tra uh, the trainee you know, for some sort of uh, uh, an individualized okay, activity like uh, declamation or something that will replace the role playing. Okay. Then we have for the second uh, module on drug addiction. Okay. So the uh, concentration uh, is on the uh, basic provisions of Republic Act 9165 on the nature of uh, drugs, uh, the drug menace. We have the national drug situation and controlled substances and other pertinent laws. And of course, the role of the youth on drug detection and prevention. Maybe we can have uh, part of the uh, activities, the uh, crafting of an action plan uh, that uh, may be undertaken uh, by, uh, by, by the student okay, uh, at home or within his uh, immediate uh, uh, surround, uh, the, 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 uh, is his immediate community. Okay. So, if you will uh, have it on the basis of the prescribed, we have structured learning exercises, which may be uh, done uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Lecture, it can be facilitated by, uh, say, Zoom, where you can uh, have, uh, uh, you can have, for example, uh, a recorded uh, video lecture. Uh, which may be distributed uh, to the students so they can take it uh, at home and uh, watch uh, these videos at their own convenience. Okay? So we can have that. Okay? And uh, also film uh, showing, and then we have individual case analysis. Okay? Then we have disaster awareness and, uh, and preparedness and management. Uh, this is uh, uh, on the basis of the uh, Implementing rules and regulations of uh, Republic Act 10121, otherwise known as the Philippine Disaster Risk Reduction and Management uh, Framework. And uh, we can uh, also have the students for an individualized uh, uh, exercises. Uh, we can uh, ask them to come up with uh, a family or household uh, hazard, hazard map and identify based on the hazard map uh, formulated, then we can uh, ask them to uh, prepare the family for, for any eventuality. So they can uh, have part of their activities, uh, activities, the uh, uh, preparation, uh, basic preparation for 
or uh, any uh, uh, disasters. Okay. So we can uh, have them for an eight hour instruction slash uh, uh, activities you know, for disaster uh, awareness, uh, pre preparedness, and management uh, module. Then we have environment module. Okay? So the module will focus on environmental protection and management uh, overview, the seven principles of environment. Water, sanitation, and conservation, and the role of the youth in environmental protection and management. Um, we, we cannot have them for a group three planting activity, but we, we can have them for, for uh, a similar undertaking. Uh, now that, uh, that uh, many are, are into uh, home gardening, maybe we can have uh, our students to, to uh, engage in containerized gardening and all, uh, and all of that sorts. Okay? Especially now that, uh, that uh, succulents and uh, cacti uh, are uh, very much uh, popular among, among uh, the young people. So maybe we can have activities uh, along that line. Okay? Um, part of uh, the activities that we can prescribe to them. Of course, in addition to the modules that uh, we will uh, prepare for them to uh, work on, uh, on uh, activity sheets and the like. And the last, we have four or five hours on other national security concerns. So we have uh, internal threats, external, and then we have the role of the youth in uh, national uh, security. Maybe we can have them for uh, activities uh, that will uh, that will engage them in uh, reflection writing, like for example, what had happened in Lebanon, for example, and uh, how they they uh, will have this uh, uh, this uh, occurrence no? as a uh, a matter of national uh, security concern, no? and how they will. Uh, uh, they will uh, uh, react as an individual, uh, as an individual, and as a youth you know, to respond to national security uh, concerns. Okay, so these are the five uh, uh, modules, uh, part of the approved revised uh, minimum standards. Uh, for national service training program modules. So we have uh, the five uh, topics as mentioned in uh, the IRR of Republic Act 9163. Are there any questions at this point in time before we proceed to uh, the, the last slides uh, presentation? And uh, this one's for the example on uh, the continuity plan by the way i'm sharing with it, this with you um i'm sorry but i'm using the template that we have at the university of luzon so um to obedize your uh, to obedize your curriculum your your syllabus your your uh, course content so the following uh, elements should be uh, present. Uh, um, as mentioned earlier, it's very important to also have for basis of your curricular review, your UL vision mission, the institutional learning outcome. So you have to, to, uh, uh, to craft also your institutional learning outcomes uh, if, if you don't have it yet. Okay. Because all, uh, all, uh, all other uh, discussions under the syllabus in the syllabus will be dependent on the uh, institutional learning outcome. So your program educational objectives, then you have the course description, course uh, learning outcomes, and then we have the matrix to uh, 
to uh, work on no? um, bearing the following uh, part. So the, the format may vary from institution to institution, but uh, remember that the more critical elements of uh, an OBDI's uh, curriculum are as follows. So we have the learning outcomes. So we, we have the uh, learning outcomes set uh, uh, specifically and uh, that uh, will uh, serve as a basis for for uh, the uh, the identification of the other requirements like the teaching and learning activities, the resources, the assessment tasks, and time. Then you have your performance indicators. Um, again, we might be veering away from from what we used to have for basis of uh, determining the performance uh, under the old format because we. Uh, are shifting to uh, flexible learning and therefore it should be learner centered so we must we must not be uh, too strict on attendance especially if uh, if uh, if we have part of our flexible le learning uh, synchronous learning uh, synchronous uh, modes like uh, zoom meetings or zoom class so if if the student fails to attend a zoom no, we, it should not be taken against the student uh, especially if the student has a valid reason for not being able to attend uh, the online uh, online class. Okay. So you will need to also rethink on how you will uh, uh, you will uh, uh, you will uh, uh, measure the performance of the students. Okay. So it's also important that you have part of your syllabus. Uh, the attendance policy. Remember that in the con in, in the continuity plan, uh, it is also important to review the, the existing policies that you have relative to uh, attendance, for example. And we have the references and the course requirements and and the, the determination of uh, how uh, the different uh, course content will address. Uh, uh, the student outcomes okay. so here is a similar uh, he, here is a sample of a uh, template on how we will do that okay so so that's for for the OBE uh, inspired uh, curriculum Okay. So here's a sample. Uh, maybe we can also craft our own, uh, but uh, allow me to share. No, but I'm not going to discuss in particular. So uh, what what may be included part of our continuity plan? So maybe we can begin by identifying what strategies we'll have to support uh, the uh, the the plan um, and the. Uh, uh, for for my institution, so it's on the basis of uh, the five strategies, uh, which is represented by the acronym CARES. Because uh, the uh, reason for coming up with such you know, is uh, an expression of care to uh, our stakeholders. So we champion uh, faculty and health, uh, student health, safety and well-being. That's very fundamental you know, based on the guidelines that were set. Number two, we uh, adapt to the learning environment because uh, um, uh, the flexible learning options would so require. Recalibration of our curricular offerings and steering resilience and innovation. Okay. Then we have uh, specific uh, items under each, like under uh, the first strategy, we have um, upholding general welfare, advocating for proactive response, institutionalizing health uh, uh, standard health protocols. We have uh, provision of psychosocial support because uh, the lockdown is, uh, is uh, 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 the, the three months lockdown 
might be uh, traumatizing no, the part of some no, of our uh, of our faculty members okay? and even our students because staying that long uh, on at home um, have uh, placed them in the situation where uh, they are uh, they are uh, uh, restricted to do uh, the usual activities that they have been doing so uh, we can have uh, a specific uh, program uh, by the higher education institution particularly NSTP maybe we can have it uh, uh, as an initiative under the NSTP uh, and in partnership with the guidance center um, debriefing uh, uh, activities for both our students and uh, and uh, faculty members we can also extend part of our uh, outreach activities to uh, our uh, our uh, partner communities uh, this uh, activity but of course uh, safety and health uh, uh, health and safety uh, first okay. then promotion of self-care so working from home performing multiple tasks and providing comfort security to others can be emotionally draining and may result in compassion fatigue no this is what I'm talking about so maybe we can also have them for certain exercises that uh, will promote self-care and others. Then adapt the learning environment uh, by securing technological infrastructure, but uh, it's not a requirement, no, but uh, uh, we, we may opt to have uh, initiatives to improve our uh, technological infrastructure, but uh, if uh, the budget doesn't allow so, then we can maximize the available resources. And we can design COVID-19 aligned physical spaces okay? um, as we prepare uh, our, our trainees in the NSTP, for example, for uh, in-person uh, meeting or instruction. So we will need to have this uh, uh, guideline set. So we observe physical distancing, we discourage students uh, mixing outside the classroom, okay? and regular conduct of health checks and limiting interactions outside the school as well. Then strategize in the use of pre-existing facilities. This is what I'm talking about. You don't need to, uh, to uh, add to your existing facilities just to prepare for, uh, prepare for flexible learning. So what you can do is to, uh, to uh, re-engineer okay, uh, your pre-existing facilities. Okay? Just like, for example, if you uh, have in your campus seven by nine meter classroom, you can have uh, on, a, on a batch to batch basis, face-to-face uh, -face or in-person meeting with about 15 students or so. Then we have number three, recalibrate curricular offerings. So focus on the most essential deliverables. Okay? I think I have mentioned and pointed that out earlier. That is very important, you know, especially in cases uh, where uh, community quarantine is still uh, uh, in effect. Uh, so we need to identify you know, what's the most essential okay, uh, set of topics okay, to be delivered. Then identify fundamental learning competencies. Establish a functional partnership with the student's family. Because as you uh, shift to flexible learning, you will, uh, you will realize the need of the support of the family members. Just like, for example, in uh, so far as uh, hazards mapping is concerned, so you might want to involve all the members of the family okay, in order for each and every member of the family to be aware of of uh, the different uh, uh, different uh, uh, precautionary measures that uh, will be uh, uh, that will be identified as uh, as a result of the hazards mapping exercise. Observe student-centered assessment and uh, promote inclusivity. Uh, by promoting inclusivity, we mean the use of contextualization and the uh, creation and implementation of individualized plan for, for learners. Always remember there's no such thing as one size fits all for flexible learning. It's student-centered. It has to be addressing 
the different and multifarious needs of uh, the different learners. Okay. Establish flexible learning options or FLOs. Okay. And uh, we talk about uh, uh, the following aspects uh, to be considered. Uh, content to be learned, learning units, delivery of content, resources available, available technologies, uh, learning environment and spaces, time allotted and assessment. So you might want to have, in addition to the four columns I have uh, presented earlier in one of the slides, additionals, additional columns to identify in more specific terms what will be required of this online mode or offline mode in terms of uh, resources, in terms of uh, technology, in terms of uh, time, and of course assessment. So it becomes more comprehensive. Okay? So the rule of thumb is the more aspects are allowed to vary in a given program, the more flexible it is. So, however, note that it is the realistic and sensible combination of flexibilities which makes learning attainable during an emergency. Okay. So we have here the set of actions to support the implementation of uh, FLOs. We have determined appropriate learning delivery modalities, mix and match educational technologies. Okay. Then venture in different learning resources. Okay. So it can be in the form of uh, uh, asynchronous mode, okay, which allows students to work on tasks at their own pace. So teachers may uh, specify or trainers may specify the time given to complete the task, but let students decide when to study. For example, uh, on, uh, on uh, introducing, say, for example, emergency preparedness, um, you can uh, prescribe them to view in YouTube uh, how to perform, say, for example, uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation or basic instruction on bandaging so they can do it at nighttime whenever they feel like doing so. But of course, you will need to also discuss with them you know, what's the deadline so that, that they will also be uh, aware of when to have this accomplished you know, at their own pace, at their own time. Okay. Then implement rotational shifts. Uh, I, I mentioned about the batch by batch. Okay. And uh, you may also consider the four is to 10. In one of the universities uh, in, uh, in our area, they're implementing the four is to 10. So where they uh, would be requiring the students to, to uh, report to class for four straight days and uh, they, uh, they uh, do activities at home for the next uh, uh, 10 days. Okay? So that's according to research, so they say. So I'm not so sure if that will work and that is safe to our students and even the faculty, but uh, we, we can, uh, we, we can uh, look into the many possibilities of how to deliver um, NSTP, the FL way. Provide standards for flexible learning options. Again, um, in spite of the fact that we uh, will need to address the different and the varying concerns of our students, we need to still establish uh, standards so that uh, assessment uh, becomes uh, easier and uh, more objective than subjective. And then the last will be steering resilience and innovation. Uh, uh, under this, uh, we forge equitable access to learning delivery modes. And this would, uh, would uh, support you know, the uh, earlier discussion we had in relation to the promotion of principles of uh, uh, inclusivity and access, okay, in so far as the learning delivery mode is concerned. Then we have maximized technology use benefits. Okay. And uh, part of uh, this is uh, the uh, use of open uh, educational resources or OER as mentioned um, previously. Okay. So that's all about the uh, basic uh, steps on how to uh, to uh, go about the process of transition or migration from the traditional approach uh, of delivering the uh, NSTP, uh, mostly in uh, uh, via the F to F way to what is now uh, referred to as flexible learning. So um, I hope that uh, this particular session will better prepare you for the uh, task uh, 
and requirements of the upcoming sessions. And the uh, upcoming sessions will be discussing in more specific terms what are, are the more specific types of flexible learning modes uh, from uh, the online to uh, the offline and uh, other, other typologies like the blended uh, approach and others. So I guess that's about it for my session. Uh, are there any questions uh, from the participants? Uh, once again, I thank so much uh, for in behalf of the Philippine Society of NSTP Educators and Implementers, the Commission on Higher Education, uh, Office of uh, Student Development and Services under the tutelage of Director uh, Silvet Gunikundo. Uh, thank you so much. Once again, good afternoon and God bless everyone. Thank you very much, Sir CJ, Dr. Vidal, for the dynamic presentation. Ang sabi nga po dun sa isang message sa chat box from Mari Chris Unico, ang pambansang MC or facilitator <laughs> ng PISNE. Ayan po. Uh, Director Silvet, uh, common pa din po yung comments sa FB comments at saka sa Zoom chat box. Yun po ay dahil sa ang internet connection ay mabagal or low ang signal, poor signal. Yun pong presentations po or lectures ay nire-request po ng participants na ma-send po sa kanila through email na nakalagay po sa kanilang uh, during doon sa registration po nila. So with permission po sa ating mga speakers, uh, ipapadala po yung mga kopya ng lectures. And then we would like to also to inform the group that we are going to upload yung full video po ng webinar na ito sa OSDS uh, YouTube. Sir CJ, sa chat box din po, meron ding clarificatory question. Kung nasa Zoom room pa po si Director Robelina Hapolbia. Yes, good afternoon po, Sir CJ. Uh, yes. First of all po, salamat po for the series of webinars for the NSTP uh, implementers and, ano, and teachers. You mentioned about ano po, uh, the uh, needs at saka po yung capabilities ng teachers and students are the most important priority when it comes to selecting the flexible learning options as well as the other modalities. Shall we... Uh, uh, the webinars that would be ongoing, series of webinars, would then be recommendatory or suggestions because it would be still be the institution who will... Uh, yes, that is my clarification. Kasi sir, karamihan po sa amin, August and September na. So by this time, we have already, uh, we already have plans. So benchmarking na lang po. In fact po sa PUP, we already have our template po for the printed modules. May survey na rin po kami. Alam na po namin kung ilan yung walang connectivity, ano yung may high connectivity at saka low connectivity. Yes. So again po, salamat po for the series of webinars para po maka-benchmark din kami. Ah, thank you so much ma'am for for uh, sharing to us your um, your uh, sharing sharing to us uh, uh, your your concern in so far as uh, the implementation of NSTP is concerned. We also uh, would would like to remind that uh, sabi ko nga kanina there's no such thing as one size fits all um, the, the intention of this webinar series is to uh, to uh, uh, is for the educators and implementers of NSTP to have greater confidence in going about the process of migrating from the traditional uh, delivery mode to uh, flexible learning kasi sabi ko uh, Nothing has changed except the delivery uh, of of the program. So we thank the Office of uh, 
uh, student uh, development and services under the uh, the uh, leadership yeah. of uh, Director Gunigundo for for finding a way to have this uh, very uh, relevant uh, undertaking with uh, the uh, NSTP educators and implementers you know, uh, for the three programs. Because uh, we have the CWT, LTS, and the ROTC all in one in this particular mm -hmm. undertaking. Thank you so much. Ma'am Cindy, back to you. Meron pa po ba tayong concerns or clarifications? At this point, uh, we would like to flash on screen yung pong bagong link para po sa August 11 continuation po ng ating webinar. Sir Ralph. By the way, Ma'am Cindy. Yes, Sir CJ. We will bring to your office the uh, slides presentations that uh, we have used um, for, for this particular session. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Um, Cindy, I think uh, we have a question coming from the representative of Carlos Hilado. Um, Cindy? Sir, you are Hello, good afternoon. Um, Cindy? And Sir CJ, thank you so much for that uh, informative, very informative uh, webinar uh, topics po. Um, Cindy, I'd like to raise this po. I was, we were not able, there are some participants here in the webinar in which they were not able to register online. Say for instance, I myself was not able to do it online. Um, how can we be, be recognized as uh, na, 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 ano kami, na, uh, we underwent this uh, seminar po, ma'am? Thank you. Ma'am <laughs> Sir, kasi po naka-close to registration site. So, pag-uusapan muna namin, sir, ha, kung paano siya imamanage. Kasi yung mga naka-register, nakikinig po sila sa Facebook Live. And um, sila, dap, sila yung naka, nandun sa priority list. So, kung hindi na po sila mag-join um, up to the last session, pwede namin po kayo ano. Salamat po. Thank you, ma'am. God bless you po. So, may pa bang ano? So, um, Sir CJ, thank you very much sa presentation mo. Very informative. Uh, Duduktungan ko lang yung sagot doon sa question ni Director. Na hindi po to... Siyempre, uh, we will um, respect the uniqueness of each institution. So, itong webinar series na to, ginagawa to help you or to inform you, capacitate yung mga faculty na hindi pa natitrain. But if you're already doing things in your institution, like sabi ni director, eh, gagamitin niya ito as benchmark. Eh, okay lang po yun. Okay po. So, um, it's been a long afternoon. We Cindy, maybe we can ask um, Major Pava to close. Okay. Let me let me 
Thank everyone for participating. Maraming pong salamat. So, ito po ay um, wala lang pa talaga. Wala pa lang sa limang. May, lim may apat pa tayong si uh, workshops or webinar and we will try to find out how we can group the participants with the smaller uh, para mag-run ng interaction po yung participants. And um, yes, we will send the presentations to you. Kaya lang hindi pa namin ma-upload dito dahil wala pa sa amin yung mga yung mga presentations po ng speakers. So we will um, either post it or upload it in our OSDS Facebook or email sa inyo. Okay po? So um, thank you Dr. CJ. Thank you po sa PISNE. Thank you po sa lahat ng NSTT implementers at educators uh, CWTS, LTS, and ROTC. Okay, uh, have a blessed afternoon. God bless you, Olet, and stay safe. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, Paul. Stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Silvet. Ma'am Sincha. So, Eugene, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, from Zambales. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. God bless us all. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. From URS. Thank you, from the Thank you, Papa. From Sambales. Thank you, Papa. From this. Thank you, Papa. From the Thank you, Papa. From the Thank you, Papa. From the lab. Thank you, Papa. From the Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. From RTU. Thank you, from Setio Carmi. Thank you from the University of Sanpato. Thank you from Pulain de San Francisco Javier Rizal, Sibunga del Norte. Thank you for the University of Sanpato. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the Technological University of Sanpato. Thank you from the Foundation University. Thank you. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Isi-send namin ang presentations pag na ibigay na sa amin. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, Ma'am Silvet. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you po from TIT. Hi, TIT. Thank you po from TUP Tagit Campus. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello, ma'am. Ah, uh, yung password ID po. Yung, yun pa rin po yung dati. Um, we can link me at all, ma'am. Po? Yeah. Yung link for next week. Password yeah. natin. Yun pa rin po gagamitin namin sa susunod. Okay, may other links sa pa ba nun? Yung po ibang credentials. Oh, hi, Don. Bye-bye. Para na sa ibaba doon yung bawat araw. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am Silvet, uh, once lang po kami mag-register, ma'am, no? No need to register na ulit for the upcoming webinars. Yes, po, hindi na. Okay, thank you very much po, ma'am. Um, ingat po kayo lahat. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you po, goodbye. God bless, take care. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ellie, Ellie. Hey, marami, marami. Thank you. Thank you, po. Mas ba, Ellie? Oh, ayos. Ma'am, thank you, ma'am. Ma'am Silvet. Sir.
Bukas ulit, bukas. Uh, Sir Giovanni, thank you. Ma'am okay. Nabuke, Ma'am Flor. Oh, salamat. <laughs> okay. Sige po. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, ma'am. Uh, okay. Sige po. And then tomorrow. <laughs> Ma'am, do we need to register po uli? Ayun na po, ma'am. Isang beses lang. Pero mag-iba po yung meeting credentials. Tama ba, Cindy? Tama I ba? Panibagong meeting. They do not need to register again, right? Kasi one time lang sila mag-register, sila yung ina-expect natin. To finish the series, tama? Yes, okay. Ay, hindi pala tomorrow, next week. Opo, sir. Next week, hindi tomorrow. Excited. Oh. <laughs> Thank you po. Okay po. Okay po. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. From STMMC po. May gusto pang pumasok sa meeting mo. Salamat po from City Horse State College. From City Horse. Salamat po. Wala pang, wala pang COVID cases sa inyo, di ba sir? Meron na po, dalawa. Ah, meron na. Oh, oh, maging from, 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 po, from Kaling Manila po. Ah, LSI. Yes po, yes po. Sige po, ayun po lang. Sige po, bye-bye. 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 From the University of Resources. Bye-bye. Bye-bye po. Bye-bye, ma'am. Bye-bye po. God bless. God bless you. Thank you po. From Iris, ma'am. From Iris. Oh, mga kapit-bahay. Yes, ma'am. NCR Director, Peace May. Ah, kayo NCR director. Opo, ma'am. Okay. Elise Suchago po from San Mateo Municipal College po. San Mateo Rizal, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, salamat, sir. Thank you. Hi, ma'am. Po, meron sa na. Ma'am Melda. From TUP Tagig Campus po. Hello, ma'am. Ah, nagpunta na ako sa inyo. Thank you po. From URS po. Thank you po. Thank you po. Goodbye po. Bye -bye. See you next week po, ma'am. Stay safe. Thank you po, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Dati nun, ma'am, from Dalubasaan ng Lunsod ng San Pablo po. Dalubasaan ng Lunsod ng San Pablo. Okay po. Taga dyan si Dr. Piglete, San Pablo. Thank you din, ma'am, from CTU. DLSP po, ma'am. Dano ba saan ang lungsod na sanpa? CTU, okay. Bye-bye, ma'am. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Ma'am, may certificate po ba tayo dito? At the end of the fifth webinar, sir. Dapat kumpletohin. Okay. Okay po ma'am. Okay. So this is the first. This is the first ma'am. Opo. So um, igugrouping po natin para lahat po ay makapasok sa meeting room sa Simon. Simultaneous po yung ano, yung okay, webinars. Po. Okay ma'am. Ah sige. Thank you po. Thank you ma'am. Log out na po. Opo. Log out na. Okay. God bless. Keep safe po. God bless you po sir. Opo. Hi, Attorney Aliswag. Papasok na din. So, hindi na nakakonek si Sir, si Major pa ba? Kaninang umpisa yun, ma'am. Tapos na-disconnect siya. Walang ilaw. Okay. Oh. Ah, sige. 
Ah, Maglalabout na ako dahil may meeting ako kay Commissioner. Iwanan ko na kayo, ha? Sige, ma'am. Ah, URS, hello po. Mabibig Reyes. Bye-bye po. Sige. Thank you. Bye, ma'am. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you very much, Cindy, sa team ng OSTS. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, ma'am.